up, Blaster. Transform and play something uh, nice. And now, a nice and nifty musical selection for easy listening. <laughs> Hold on to your dancing shoes and go, man, go! <laughs> one shall stand, one shall fall. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to One Shall Stand, One Shall Fall, a Transformers TCG podcast broadcasting live from an underground bunker in the middle of the murky Midlands. I want to boot some Decepticon right in his turbocharger. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm down, Cliff Jumper. Wow. Seriously, put that gun down. You're going to kill somebody in this studio. Goodness. Right. Anyway, I'm your uh, host, Lee, from Blue Top Productions. And uh, today I have a motley crew of people to talk everything about Transformers the TCG. That's right. The trading card game based on the cartoon from the 80s. This podcast will talk about news about the Transformers the TCG, new releases, deck profiles, and stuff that's happening in the community. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy. One shall stand, one shall fall. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages? This is Lee from Bleeped Up Productions, and today we have another fantastic episode of One Shall Stand, One Shall Fall, the one and only... That's right, Transformers TCG podcast on the airwaves. Oh, it's good to be back. We've, we've survived the marathon of the characters, as you can tell by the thumbnail. We're moving on to the battle cards. But before we get into the battle cards, I'm joined again by my amazing co-host in Dave Cook from the Energon Hustlers. How are you doing, Dave? What's up, dude? Yeah, I'm good. Good. Eager to start um, <laughs> wading the through marathon. 62 battle cards. 62. 62 this is me i'm yeah 62 cards guys this is this is a bit of a beefy set i'm not gonna lie of battle cards uh from the get-go i can say there's some good there's some confusing and there's some mm, come i wouldn't say great cards but overall i like the set of the battle cards like and and we've said that we are going to be honest with all our reviews so we're going to be very very honest with all our reviews, so I feel that we should just uh, get straight into it, Dave, because 62 is quite a big number. It is a big number. Um, I've had a chance to read these in advance this time, unlike the characters, because my physical cards <laughs> turned up. So I've Very actually nice. I've actually played with some of these cards now as well, so I can kind of have a bit more of a frame of reference than than we did with the characters, which was all theory. <laughs> so yeah, we, we do go straight in if you want, mate. So card number one, it's not really a new card, is it? No, it's a bit of a reprint, I would say. Do you want to go for it? You want to do this one? Yeah, sure. I'll I'll, I'll take number one, and then and then you'll do number two, and we'll go far, vice versa as we always do. So, guys, number one in the set is All Out Attack. It's an orange pip. It's an action, and it says each of your untapped characters can attack this turn. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Dave, but I believe this was. A card that you got in the Energon edition uh, set when Wizards released it. It was it was in the it was reprinted by Wizards in the Energon edition. It was originally in the San Diego convention pack uh, with Cliff ah, Jumper and pack. Slipstream. So this card at one point was commanding quite some pound value, dollar value, whatever you want to you know whatever your currency is in your country. Um, it was a lot of money. And for that reason, it never really saw a massive amount of play, did it? Because not that many people had it. I, I think I remember you, you you played someone in, was it London last year? And you, 2019, and you were like, that's an expensive orange pip. <laughs> it was. It, the guy was running all out attack and he was running cliff jump on a few things. And every time, I didn't want to throw salt on the guy, bless him. But every time he flipped it, I was like, oh, that's a very expensive orange pip card you've got there. Because it was. They were going for like, what, 40, 50 pounds in, in, uh, the, in this yeah. country? It was ridiculous. I think at one point they were higher. At one yeah, point they I were can, higher. I, can, I think, I I think before Energon Edition came out, they were higher. It was crazy expensive. Which is why I, I never owned them. Uh, you know, it's a very powerful card, isn't it? Let's face it. If you're running a really wide team, all out attack is, can be nasty. Because you just swing with everything into um, 
the most you know high value target as it were like turn so you, you know you've just wheeled or it's turn your turn two you just go boom all out attack smash i'm gonna hit that guy with four or five guys whatever um you know at the cost of all your guys being tapped instead but i think it's really nice i've included this um it's actually a card i did a uh, alternate art of myself as well um nice. be- because who wants to pay that sort of money for for a card that is situationally good it's not good all the time obviously late game it does nothing <laughs> no so. it's just an orange pip in your deck but yeah, it's cool. Interesting art as well on this one. You know, it's that's Beast Wars art. That's that's Beast Wars Megatron and Beast Wars Optimus Primal. So, Beast Wars. love a little uh, bit of Beast Wars. Is that is that any hints, Bayformers, for what's coming in the future? Mm. It'd be cool. That'd be really cool if they are, because yeah, Randy's set was really cool. So, yeah, I'm I'm excited. I've been converted to Beast Wars, to be honest. It hasn't Same. aged well. It's it's aged like you know. <laughs> gone off milk into cheese really or yogurt or whatever but yeah it's uh it's, it's an educational show it's definitely something to watch i'm not gonna lie so dave number two only 60 more to go now mate only 60 more to go We've, we're two in what is this bad boy <laughs> it's the ancient security tentacle which i think is going to solve some of the uh the puzzlement we had last time over the judges and their tentacles so this yeah. is the ancient security tentacle it's a blue pip for specialists and it's a green pip and it's a tentacle it's got a trait i think it's the first battle card we've seen with a trait isn't it i think so mm. upgrade weapon put on quintus on specialist only damage counters can't be moved from other characters to the upgraded characters up to three tentacles can fit into one weapon slot plus one attack plus one armor um yeah this is good um i would play this just for what it is just a tentacle um plus one attack plus one defense really good the the judges and the specialists their attack is quite low so anything that can buff them up to it so they can actually hurt people rather than just tickle them is a good thing i like it what do you think i I think it's quite interesting because it's obviously we were talking about the two judges mainly from the 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 character set but i believe some of the smaller ones might be specialists, like the Executioner and the other guy might see play with this. Um, yeah, I really like it. I know I know you've said off, off mic, you've, you've already built a Quintus on deck, so you've already beat me to it. Um, how have you, how have. Have you found uh, playing uh, the Quintus Ons with this shenanigans and all that stuff? A headache, because I didn't know. <laughs> it's working out all those synergies and what order to do stuff. Mm. Um, I've, got, I've gone for, is it Deliberata? Uh, which is the judge, and I've gone for three of the little Sharktacons, which is Peck, uh, Chomp, and Biter, I think are the three I've included. Cool. Um, like, the tentacles are important, as are some of the other battle cards that we're going to come to shortly. Um, it plays incredibly different to any other deck you've played before, because it it, it does weird things with that um, that judge. They, they're like a support character that you've got to protect but your Sharktacons are little, so it's it's weird. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. No, I like it, and I think this is this is one of the ones in my deck. Um, what I've been doing with the tentacles is I'm playing at like a almost like splashing them, like you know, three different tentacles or four, depending on what what you need for your deck. So you've got options. Like, oh, they're playing horrible. I can put this one, or oh, I need this one at this point. I'll get that one. And there's. I think there's three tentacles in the set, like three different tentacles. Cool. And I, and I like the uh, effect that you can put three tentacles in a weapon slot. It's not like the other kind of three slot ones where if you play one, you can play another one and another one and another one because it's such an yeah, interesting... Yeah, they all have powerful, to be the same, yeah. Yeah, and it's such a powerful, you know, um, card. It makes sense that you can only play one at a time. Unless you play some fun- funky cool cards, you know, play more upgrades. Yeah. I think I think it's cool. Um, like I say, it's still a jigsaw puzzle that I'm trying to unravel. So that's the ancient security ten- tentacle. What have you got? Oh, you've got oh you've got a lovely God. name to pronounce here, mate. Oh, why? <laughs> why have I been given? I'm going to butcher this name. Angol Moyes, Angol Moyes. I don't know. Surge, whatever. I'm sorry. Angle Angle Moi. Yeah, Angle Surge. Moi, it's like, it's the, it, whatever. It's, it's, you the, know. it's the French Surge. Why are you, <laughs> what card creators out there? Stop making so many hard freaking things to say. Come on, man. Seriously. No, but anyway, this card is an action. It's a blue pip. And it says, do one damage to one of your melee characters. It gains plus four 
until the end of a t uh, end of turn. So plus four attack till the end of turn. If you have Unicron Chaos Bringer on your starting team, put one Chaos Counter on him. So the first thing I can say is this is probably going to be a card that will probably be included in a possible re-deck shuffling for the Unicron raid. Because obviously Wes was talking about like making a, um, a harder version and tweaking it and stuff. This might be one of them, but just a general look at it. This is horrific for melee characters. Oh my god. Right, the first thing that comes to my uh, my head is Dinobots. All right, Dinobots, you do one damage to like a Grimlock or you do like a damage to Sludge and whatever and then because they're, well no, definitely Grimlock because I believe he is melee. He gets plus four attack. What the heck? And most cars are melee as well, so that's pretty darn stupid. Like, that's a really good card. I really like it. Dave, your thoughts? Exactly the same. It is really good. There's a, there's an abundance of good melee characters now, um, particularly like there's loads in Wave 5, like Horrible, um, Fangry, they're all melee. Um, you've got Brawn's melee. You've, <laughs> there's so many. And like the Sharktacons from this set, um, again, this is a card that's made the, the first deck I've built, this made, made the card. I just wanted to include as many Bayforms cards as possible. This is a great card outside of the raid um, and it is going to see play. You can damage your horrible, flip him to another mode. Boom, off goes that damage that you've just put on him. We don't like horrible, do we? He's, he's dumb. You're dumb. You're dumb. It's a really good card. It's a very strong card. It definitely needs to be a blue pit rather than orange or a white because it would be too good then, I think. But it's very interesting that... And obviously, Bayformers are working in conjunction with the arc. They're designing with each other's sets in mind. So it's really cool to see a standard card, effectively, that also works for a raid. I like it. I think it's a great card. It's going to be a staple. If you're playing with the set, if it's legal, expect to see Angle Moi Surge. If that's how you pronounce it. He, that, that card, yeah. That card. Number three. <laughs> so number four is Aquatic Maneuvers. It's a Black Pip card. It's a secret action. We like them. Oh, I like them. Claire hates them. I love them. Uh, it is reveal when one of your Quintessons or boats defends. Good old sea spray. Um, when revealed, the defender gets plus two armor until the end of battle. When you flip one or more blue this battle, reduce the attacker's pierce total by one for each blue you flip. That is a fantastic card. Ooh, wow. That is like, like, like Nautica likes this. Um, sea Spray obviously likes it. The Quintessons, like the Alicons, the ones we reviewed last time that want to be in blue shells. They're gonna love this because they're gonna take hardly anything. You know, I'll just, I'll just I've got loads of tough. I'll reveal aquatic maneuvers. Bosh, you you don't do anything to me. Your pierce is irrelevant. So again, it's nice from from my perspective to see a card that answers that conundrum of pierce. What do you think? Yeah, uh, I really like it. I think the thing is, we've said it with multiple sets that we reviewed, Dave. It's interesting to see people's takes on how to stop the black pierce pip, and this is a really cool one because. Yeah, like the Quintessons, I was wondering how they were going to probably keep around because they, from the looks of it, they don't have a lot of attacks. Like, obviously, the little guys do, but the judges don't. So they're probably going to be the ones that will want to get murdered first. To see this, you know, it's pretty tasty. I know, obviously, there's other boats out there that are probably going to get a bit of love from this. I think this is a cool card. It's quite niche. Um, so you're not going to see it everywhere, but if you're playing an archetype with those things, either you know the boats or the quintessons, you are going to be running this card. Something like this is just going to slide in right alongside it. I agree. So yeah, that's aquatic maneuvers. What have you got? Okay, so uh, sticking with secret actions, I have Are These Wires Important? It's a blue pip card, it's a secret action, and it says reveal when one of your beasts, Dinobots, Firecons, Predacons, or... Your Dazzle Strike, Lionizer, Ravage, Steeljaw, or Triptychon defends, when revealed, scrap all the attacker's utilities. Wow. Okay. So, you know at the beginning of the episode when I said there's a lot of wording-ish, like, hilariousness with this? This card is... If you are running this, 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 it's like a receipt of characters in this, but it's so yeah. <laughs> good. It's so interesting to see this. Like... 
it's cool to see Triptychon get love. Like, Dave and me love the big boy. It's cool to see some love thrown uh, at the Predacons. It's cool to see some love thrown uh, at Steeljaw and Ravage. Even the Dinobots, to be honest, and Firecon. You know, this card's pretty good. Um, I would definitely try probably playing this in a interesting Dinobot build, because I think it'd be fun to do. Like, I've, I've been dabbling in a blue orange Dinobot build of recent days, but um, yeah, I really like this card. Like, like we were saying at the beginning, very wordy, but uh, Dave, your thoughts? Yeah, I do like it. I think I think it's a it's nice to see some utility removal. It's, it's, it's very similar to Sabotage Armament, um, but very specific in, in those particular characters, and I, you know, I, I like that. It, it is quite wordy. Unfortunately, they don't, all those characters don't share a keyword or a trait, which they could have could have done. Personally, I'd have liked to have seen this in Orange Pip. Okay. Personally, because it's kind of counter to what most of those archetypes want to do. Dinobots want to be orange, generally. You know, Firecons are an orange deck. Lionizer is a bold orange guy. Ravage and, and Steeljaw can kind of be either or, but Steeljaw, again, is an orangey guy. So I, I don't know. I, I think this one could have been an Orange Pip, personally. But there are a lot of annoying utilities, out, like, like Enhanced Power Cell, pocket processor um so to have something alongside sabo i think that's a good card yeah 100 percent. i'm probably going to play this obviously it's very situational because it's asking for certain characters but yeah i, I feel this probably making a, a triptychon in a triptychon deck yeah trip triptychon's gonna like it um i i, I love triptychon he, he's he's better now i think and, and anything that can help him further uh, just be playable, and I think is a good thing. So, yeah. The next one, this is a cool one. This is, reminds me of a Wave 3 battle card, and this card is called Armed to the Teeth. It's a star card. It's double orange. We like them. You may play any number of weapons onto your characters for a star. So it's reminiscent of that card, Full Loadout, isn't it? Yeah, with um, with that basically saying you can play one armor, one weapon, one utility. This is all about the weapons. Like, just go for that, through the weapons cache at whatever, you know, HQ you're at and just go, yep, yeah, I'm going to take this gun, this gun, this gun, this gun. I like it. Yeah, um, I'm with you on this one, Dave. I think it's cool. If you've got the stars for it, can you imagine this in Predaking? Oh, this is so good with Predaking. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll play five weapons on him and kill that guy. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, you wouldn't. You might not be able to play it in a Predaking build as such, but in Primus you probably could, because Predaking yeah. is twenty. Well, this is it. So the Primus and and a format I've been dabbling with with the Great War, where you have fifty star teams. Um, this, this card could be nuts. Can you imagine you just load up everybody Jeez. in your squad with like a weapon? 100%. I love this card. It's super cool. If people, and I'm kind of pointing my finger here at ATP, if they do something similar to what they did with Motormaster and uh, Silverbolt, you could see this going oh, in. Oh, completely. Because, yeah. because there is an event oh. coming up that is including ATP and Bayformers as legal sets. Oh, God. Yeah. Don't do it, guys. Or do it. Do it. Yeah, do it. <laughs> do it. Come on. Do it. Do it! Do it now. <laughs> do it now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's Arm to the Teeth. What's next, mate? Okay, so uh, we're getting into more Quintesson shenanigans, guys. Our shenanigans are cheeky and fun. Yeah, I mean, his shenanigans are cruel and tragic. Which makes them not shenanigans at all, really. Evil shenanigans. I swear to God, I'll pistol whip the next guy that says shenanigans. We're going to talk about the aspect of bitterness. This is a orange, blue, and green icon. Holy cow, there's three icons on this bad boy. Uh, it's an upgrade, it's an armor. It gives you two extra armor and defense just built in. It is a star po point, guys. But it says, put on a Quintesson leader's or Quintesson specialists only. And when this leaves the battle, one of your Quintessons gets plus two attack and plus two armor or defense until the end of turn. I kind of like this. <laughs> it's it's obviously reminiscent to what we were talking about with the Quintessons is like, how are they going to keep around? How are they going to do all these fun shenanigans? Our shenanigans are cheeky and fun. 
Yeah, I mean, his shenanigans are cruel and tragic. Which makes them not shenanigans at all, really. Let's just be honest. It gives you, you know, plus two armor. So that's pretty darn good to begin with. And then we've already talked about the tentacles beforehand. With three of those and this, for example, that's plus five already. Goodness gracious. And then you've got, you know, the aquatic maneuvers we talked about earlier. Man, the Quintessons have got some stuff. I like it. What are your thoughts, Dave? There's a whole cycle of these, and we're going to get, we'll be doing them very so shortly um, on this episode. They're all really good, and I think it's about working out which ones fit your strategy for your deck. Um, this one's really cool. What, what I like about these is, um, obviously, if they bashing shield it, you just go, okay, that's fine. I'll add an, I'll, I'll keep the plus two armor buff because I'll just give this guy that you're going to swing into plus two armor. Or you can overwrite it on your own turn with another one and get plus two attack on a Quintesson. So it's really versatile. Um, I think the great cards are great pip wise as well. They they do a lot. Obviously, they're a star card, but I think if you're running Quintessons, you want to try and make some stars for these things. I feel that a, uh, a very themed esque. Quintesson Judge deck might need to be made, uh, Dave, with multiple different uh, heads and other shenanigans of Quintesson cards at the moment. I'm I'm licking my chops. I'm licking my chops, mate. Mm. They are really cool, and I really like the art as well. It's very. It reminds me of the Enigmas from Wave Two with like the silhouetted yeah. combiner. It's kind of got that kind of like swirly psychedelica about it, and then some some crazy face on there. So I think I, I, I like these a lot. I think they're they're must haves if you're running a Judge. I think. Or, or one of the other Quintessons that um, kind of like their, 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 their stats are quite low on the attack front. So the, these all need to be factored into your deck. From the aspect of bitterness, we've got the aspect of death, which is the next one. And it's a black and a green, so not quite as many pips, but black's a good pip anyway, as we know. Um, so same same um, criteria, it can only go on a Quintesson leader or specialist. Uh, when the upgraded character is attacked, Put a death counter on this. So following through from our wave one, we're seeing counters being put on stuff. Um, uh, when this leaves the battlefield, do damage to an enemy equal to the number of death counters on this. And how much armor does it give Lee? Three? What? Plus, th plus three armor. Plus three armor. Um, it's really good. Again, I think you run these like a toolbox in your deck. You kind of pick and choose which ones you want at the time you know if you've got the stars to, to run quite a few you know three or four of these you would kind of run a toolbox um you know with plus three armor and i think how much armor has deliberata got two i think two so you know if they've got a chew through five <laughs> armor you're going to be taking a quite a few attacks before you go down and when you do go down if this is still on the board you shoot someone for a fair amount of damage off. I think it's cool. I really like it. I really, really, really love these guards. Um, it just benefits all the Quintesson stuff, like the Inquisitor, dare I say. Yeah, the one that sounds like a, you know, you've got the clap in uh, Clementia. Oh, yeah, Drebs, Dre Drebs yeah, you, you got Clementia, Drebsnik, um, you know, General Gyrick as well. He's a leader. He could, ha he could have this. Um, so, you know, making your, your you know, General Gyrix actually got six attack as well. You know, making him five armor, six attack, bleh, that's horrible. With, <laughs> with the hilarious ability of giving all other characters on your opponent's side minus one health as well. Like, there might be something there with the aspect of death just because of the... Uh, well, let's just say we kept taking the piss out of the guy. The guy who pulled the lever, he's the executioner. Yeah, leave, so. leave a guy, yeah, leave a guy. Leave a guy, yeah, you know. It's like on the Death Star. The guy who presses the button, yeah, that guy, it's him. I think it's cool, and it'd be interesting to know if they're magic players, because uh, Green Black's the Golgari clan in magic, and that's like the, the like the, all about death and zombies and stuff mm. like that. So, mm, interesting. I like it. I don't know if that is intentional, but it is, if it's not, that's really cool. <laughs> hey, man, when we've reviewed all these sets, we're going to get Adam on so we can ask him that. Yeah, definitely. I'm definitely going to feel that too. Who, what aspect have you got, mate? I have the aspect of doubt. And uh, just like bitterness, it is a orange, blue, and green pip. 
It's also uh, an armor for its upgrade, and you can put this on Quintesson Specialist with a bot mode only. So obviously that is a select few that only have the bot mode. But it says when you put this on a character, untap that character, repair two damage from it, an instant heal, and it gives you plus two armor. Awesome. This for me is the best one because untapping a character... I think I think aspect of death and that's probably better on like General Gyric, but if you're running Deliberata, Clementia, or um, Drebsnik, this is key because you can use their tap ability, then play this if they're damage repaired to, and then untap them to keep them out of the line of fire, and then swing with another chap. Yeah, you know this this means you don't have to run um, micro capacitor, or you can run it in addition to micro capacitor to maximize those untaps. Yeah, man. I, I like it. I think it's really cool. Again, it's a star card. I think it's great. I think it's really, really cool. I like how all the heads are different so far, which is really unique, uh, which was pretty much unique to the Quintessons because all the heads had different opinions and, you know, different voices and different, you know, personalities. So it's kind of cool to see them transfer that over to uh, to this set so far. I really like it. <laughs> We've got to get a new travel agent. So that was doubt. Next up is aspects of laughter, and again, it's a blue, orange, green. Um, I think there's something you'll notice as you go through the set, um, listeners, is there's a lot of green cards that are Quintesson cards. Um, the same proviso here. Again, we've got put on Quintesson leaders or Quintesson specialists only. When one of your cards would scrap a number of green cards from your hand, instead scrap that number of green cards from your hand, minus one, plus two armor. That's really good as well. Yeah, I, it's, it's, I think like you were saying earlier, it's, they've all got different aspects to different builds, which is really interesting. Like, I'm just trying to think which would benefit the scrapping of cards more than anything. They're, they're all really good, and there's... There's a stratagem that we'll come on to in the next episode that I think if you're running you need this as well because you have to scrap three green cards from your hand and taking that down to two is a lot less punishing on your actual hand. Um, it's really, you know, it's, it's good. Like, you know, when I looked at the Inquisitors at first glance, I'm like, oh, I'm not too sure. But like, when you start combining with the other bits that they've designed for this set, you see that there's so much synergy between the battle cards and the characters, and I really like that. And it's it, they play very differently, I think, to any other faction that we've got in the game currently. Yeah, I I, I completely agree. I'm I'm liking uh, the aspects so far, and I'm oh man, I just want to I want to get them on the table right now. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> well, you've got another aspect. So what is yeah, it? The aspect of rage. Now, this one is a orange and green pip. It's an armor again and a star card at that, guys. And it's put on a Quintesson leader or Quintesson specialist only. When you put this on a character, move one damage counter from the upgraded character to another character. Then do one damage to a character. One attack, one armor it gives you. Holy cow. So you put this on somebody, you move a damage from the upgraded character, and then you do another point of damage to someone else. So it's kind of like almost like a like a better frag toss in a way. I like it. I like it. And again, star 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 cost uh, for, of one for this card. So the aspect of rage, Dave, what are your thoughts? It's it's really good. It's like a two 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 point ping, isn't it? And it's you like you say unlike sort of frag toss where they get to choose you you're choosing where it goes. So yeah, it's really good. I think with the aspects as well, it opens up some real sort of deck building questions because it's like, you know, I've only got so many stars left to put on these star cards. Which ones do I take? Because they're all good. Like, every single one's good. There's not a duff one. Yeah, I think I think death and rage work really well together. And I think they'll work really well with the executioner, I think. Yes. Just because just you want to just keep doing ping damage and some fun shenanigans and stuff like that. I do think, I, I probably would agree with you, Dave, that the aspect of doubt is probably the best one right now. But I do think it, it depends on how you're building your deck. I think that's the one thing I like about all these aspects is they all address something. Like you could run all, you know, five if you wanted to. Sure, that's five stars. 
but you know it's you know Quintus, uh, the Quintessons seem to want to have green cards they want to seem to be a mixed pip deck from what I've seen yeah and I think all these all these uh, aspects do do them all quite well and give them justice as well mm. that, that is really like it's a really interesting style as well like my I think the build I've got had six cards so th- that didn't have a green pip on so 34 green pip cards that's mental that's like every single flip you're going to get a choice of what you want to pick up put down it's really 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 it's a really clever way of making a deck feel really really different so yeah that's that's all the aspects um that's it i think they're great i think they're all they all fulfill a role and i like one of the things i like when i used to play uh magic and commander was like tutoring cards are very very powerful and powerful 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 mechanic here with a green pip and and being able to choose the right thing at the right time yeah i think it's gonna be good interesting i'd be interested to see what comes out of sort of any competitive uh bayformers events because i know they've just had one finish so it'd be interesting to see if there was any quintus on shenanigans our shenanigans are cheeky and fun yeah i mean his shenanigans are cruel and tragic which makes them not shenanigans at all, really. Yeah, it's true. The uh, we weren't we weren't too impressed with the the first arc tournament and who won that. Surprise, surprise. Same same silly things again uh, as always. You would have thought being uh, the arc tournament, maybe you get some cool arc char- character cards up there. No, same stupid characters, wasn't it, Dave? It was. It was Sky Shadow. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, so boring. You know, fair play to the guy. Not going to take anything away from him from running a tournament, but come on, man. Seriously, just move away from that guy. It's boring. Yeah, My that's the thing, isn't it? Sorry. Yeah, which is why they banned <laughs> it in ATP, didn't they? You know, they banned it. So, but yeah, we've we finished with the aspects. And my next card to look at. This is a, an interesting one. This is assuming control. It's a black pip for specialists, and it's an action. And it says, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, choose a character in your KO area. You may add its attack to the attack total of any Quintesson specialist with a bot mode, Bombshell, Dr. Arkerville, Meg Empress, or Mega Empress, Mind Wipe, Sound Blaster, Sound Wave, Tarantulas, or Trypticon until the end of turn. Then put this card in your KO area. It's very wordy, isn't it? Again, <laughs> it's very wordy. Um, it's cool that they're kind of hinting at cards that may be coming, like Dr. Arkerville and Mega Empress. Um, it's cool. It's a really good card. Like, mechanically, this is a good card. Um, you know, it's obviously going to be good because it KOs itself. It's just a bit wordy. Yeah, I think I think this uh, this card is really good. I, I completely agree with what you said, Dave. But I I like we said at the beginning of the show, there is some cards that seem to be a little bit too wordy, and this unfortunately is one of them. It's kind of cool to see there's some love given to like Bombshell and a few others, which is cool for me just because I love Wave Two Bombshell. Um, it's interesting to see they've they've chose Mind Wipe of all all things. That's quite interesting. Um, you know, given some, you know, a titan that doesn't see a lot of play, you know, some love, which is kind of cool to see. Um, kind of nice to see uh, Sound Blaster and Soundwave on there. That's kind of cool. But yeah, Specialist, Black Pit, you know, very, I think I think it, you'll probably see this played in, like we said, Quintesson builds, just because that ability for Specialists in bot mode, it just, you know, you can ca- choose one of your KO'd, area characters and just go yeah you know i've got one of those baby sharticons that i can just basically pump up uh from the graveyard onto this guy it seems pretty good i'm not gonna lie i like yeah, it yeah i think it's a good card um you know looking at the sharticons you know quite a lot of them have got like four attack in one of their modes if not both their modes um <clears throat> excuse me um you know adding plus four attack to something isn't a bad thing um it's just I don't know. It's, like, it's future proofing their future design space, mm. I think, um, and and also like you say, giving the nod to those other characters. Um, it just for me, like, would there have been an easier way of doing this? 
I don't know. Yeah, it's not too bad. What's your next one? Okay, I've got a car called Blackmail. It's a black pip. It's an upgrade armor, uh, and it's a mercenary card, which is quite nice to see. And it says, uh, when the upgraded character takes attack damage and isn't KO'd, if the upgraded character is a mercenary, move one damage counter from it to one of your other characters. This also gives you plus one armor or defense. I, I, you know, it's kind of nice to see some mercs uh, get some love. I'm not going to lie, David and me touched on it in our character episode, that um, they kind of got forgotten about like immediately like it literally they were for one wave and that was it like there were so many other kind of cool aspects of like mercs you could have put in you know in in wave five wizards but i guess you were going to probably do some other stuff with later waves i'm assuming but um yeah it's nice to see a a merc related card because obviously you know you can play merc related cards with other mercs and play multiples and stuff like that so this could be really interesting i i kind of uh Kind of like blackmail. I like it. I think this and Brawl from the Combaticons, because mm. he's got Brave. The, lo the the longer he stays on the battlefield, <laughs> the more annoying he is. 100%. I think this is a, a, a really good card for him. This would be really good on Octone. Yep. Just keep just keep as damage off Octone as much as possible. Um, yeah, it's 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 cool. Like, you know. It's it's only got the black pip, so you know it's kind of got to fit your your build, as it were. You know, you, you know, you t it's it's interesting. Like I say, they did forget about mercenaries almost instantly. So see something that gives a bit of love. It's interesting that it moves the damage to one of your other characters and not back to an enemy. But you could, for example, move this to a damage movement machine like horrible, and um, you yeah, know, just do some stuff with it. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I was thinking more the fact that you can have some fun shenanigans with Slipstream, Windsweeper again, and just that throw a Merc in there for this fun shenanigans maybe. But yeah, I like Blackmail. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. The next one, oh, this this one's one of my favourite pictures in the whole set. <laughs> this is Bomb Removal Protocol. Um, it's a three-colour card again. We've had lots of three-colour cards in this set. Um, we're only up to the letter B. It's black, blue, green upgrade utility if one or more damage counters would be moved onto one of your characters from an opponent's character move those damage counters to this instead then if this has two or more damage counters on it scrap it um it's a bit like what was that card from wave five the oh, what was it regenerative core yeah i think so yeah 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 um... so it's very similar to that um this is uh, this is anti horrible tech, isn't it? It's like oh, go away, horrible. I think honestly, when it comes to um, cards, I think all designers know, and um, we've we've had a, a lot of card designers on on this show, and all of them have said you've got to live within the parameters of what wizards have done, and it's been interesting to see people's answers to Pierce uh, and damage uh, moving and stuff like that because that's obviously quite prevalent. Um, and this, this is rather cool. Like, like, like you say, I, another triple icon is got me smiling from ear to ear just because I'm just like, cool. Keep giving me all these multiple different icons. I really, really think this will be great in like, you know, an overwhelming advantage deck. Fantastic. Um, but it's also very, very good for what it does. You know, if you do go against horrible, that's great. If you see other stuff kind of like, you know, slipstream, wind sweep, you know, the damage moving around stuff. It it became quite prevalent towards the end of wave five and obviously until the game's cancellation. So uh, I like it. Three icons. I'll probably play it because it's three icons. Well, that's this is it. It's going to slide in, you know, like you can play cloud cover from arc wave one, which does a similar, th well, that stops damage from being moved at all. But that's also exactly the same color pip. So you can run very consistent blue black pierced decks uh, and then if you've got all these answers to pierce that people have been doing like trithelium aquatic um, maneuvers um, etc like it's cool and i just love the picture it's swerve with the bomb behind his back i just love it it's great you've got to love swerve <laughs> man you've got to love swerve but that's it i love it he's one of my favorite characters in the book so so yeah um next up Okay, uh, the next card is CNA Encoded Armory. It is a white pip, 
with the melee trait on it, which is kind of nice. It is an action, and it says, do one damage to one of your melee characters. Return an upgrade with put on melee characters only from your scrap pile to your hand. Oh, that just makes me smile from ear to ear thinking about Power Sword. Power Sword. Power Sword. That's the exact card I was going to say. Um, it's... It's cool. Like, how many how many weapons are there apart from Power Sword that are melee only? Welcome to Intermission. There's probably a fair few, but I, I think for me, obviously the standout is Energon Sword. Oh no, Power Sword, sorry. But also, also the other one that I think is probably going to see some play probably with this is... Uh, Energon slingshot, Dave. Ooh, that's that's put on melee that's only. That's another one. I'd forgot. I'd forgot. Do one damage card. to a yeah. character. Wasn't there a card in Arc Wave One that was melee only? Energon was it? Energon sword. Oh, it was Energon sword with a flip multiple blues. You're a defense of your a, a person you're attacking becomes zero. Yeah, it's melee. Yeah, because I put it on a I put that on a, in a deck where it didn't work, and I just bursted out laughing and was like, "Why did I put this in here? None of my characters are melee. This doesn't work." <laughs> So there's three cards that we've, we've just thought of very, very quickly. I don't know if there's any others, but there could be some in, in the works. Mm. Um, anything that interacts with your scrap pile in this game is very, very powerful because recursion in, in other TCGs is strong. In a game where you just naturally fill up that pile as you are playing the game, you know, you're adding at least two cards every single player's turn to that pile. Um, at least, you know, obviously white pips and that make it more bold and tough and whatnot. So that's a really powerful mechanic. And that's one of the problems that Power Sword had. It was a good card, but because it didn't have any kind of colored pips on it, you'd have to kind of draw it naturally, whereas this gives you another chance to get it. Um, so yeah, I think this is good. So that's an interesting one. And this oh, next card. This, this is from, from one of one of my favourite bits about Transformers. Demolition Derby. It's an action. Great artwork as well. Um, if your opponent has at least twice the number of characters on the battlefield than you do, one of your characters gets plus two attack until the end of turn. When it attacks and does enough attack damage to KO an enemy this turn, untap it. Hmm. That is really, really cool. Obviously, they've got to be a lot wider than you are, particularly early game. You know, as your characters go down, this this card, if you've not picked off their characters, is going to get stronger. But the plus two attack until the end of turn and the fact that you get to untap off it. So if you play this late before the wheel, the, say you're outnumbered two to one and you attack you KO the character, untap, and then you swing again. And because it's not the end of the turn yet, you retain that plus two. Yeah, big boys love this a lot. Definitely, definitely. But what do you expect? It's got no pips. Exactly. Um, and it's cool. It kind of fits in with the whole theme of the set as well, being like that scene from Transformers, a movie, where Cup and Hot Rod just drive around in circles. Innocent. <laughs> Then we have photon charges. Then let's hold the demolition, Davey. What are your thoughts, mate? Yeah, I really like it. I think it um, it's very situational. I could see it. Definitely, if you're thinking about playing maybe too wide, it might be worth putting in. Like, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, like Skywarp Wave 2 could be really enjoy this card. Yeah, yeah, just play one off. Yeah, you could play one off in your deck, couldn't you? you know, oh, this is the right time. Boom, I'll get it back. Yeah, and then it's also the fact is it's like, cool, I get a plus two, plus three from that attack. Next turn, I'll flip, grab this. Oh, cool. Um, I've got this in hand ready for another turn if I'm still lower, you know, got lower bots than my opponent. You know, it's, yeah, it's good. I really like it. It's a very situational card, but I like it a lot. It's situational, but if the situation's right, it's incredibly powerful. It could enable you to turn the tide. You know, you could go from a losing position to getting two attacks out of nowhere. Yeah, I could just see, like, the horrificness of OPPBL with this. 
Oh, yeah. oh uh. God. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Dirty. <laughs> Dirty. This is going to take some time. Everything's very... Dirty. So, yeah, that, that was Demolition Derby. What have you are? Oh, you've got another good title. I like this one. Gosh darn it, guys. Come on, man. Okay, so it's a discordant uh Oh my gosh, darn it. Like, why'd you give me hard names? My dyslexia is just running rampant. What is it, Dave? You know it. Go on. Dis discordant cacophony. Cacophony. Yeah. That's it. It's, cacophony. it's a tricky one. Okay. That 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 card you see on the screen, audio listeners, sorry, but Dave said it properly. Uh, it's a blue pip. It's got the bike trait in the blue pip, which is kind of cool to see. It's a secret action, and it says, Reveal, after your opponent chooses an attacker um, and has at least one untapped character, and you have at least two motorbikes, Blaster, Frenzy, Hellbat, uh, <laughs> Jazz, uh, <laughs> Night Scream, Sound Blaster, Sound Wave, Tarantulas, or trans transmutant when revealed the character untaps and cannot attack this turn and the opponent chooses a different character to attack wow okay like we keep saying with most of our set there is a it's a bit long-winded but the payoff when revealed is very very tasty like the ability of just the attacker untaps and cannot attack this turn. Oh my gosh, like that can save your bacon. Oh, definitely. It's so good. And it can also, say they're down to two characters and they've got a heavily damaged character that they keep behind and swing in with the other guy and you just go, uh, 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 untap that one, come in with your really damaged guy. This could swing the tide of battle. Like, I know we, we keep saying about the wordiness, but really, all the, what, I suppose one way to look at it is it says, um, you know, after you approach an attacker and you have at least one of these characters. So you don't have to read all that spiel out all the time. So I've got Jazz on my team and he can play that really bad 1980s porn music. <laughs> <laughs> Which literally, like, every time he plays his speakers, it's the same song. It's like, Jazz, do you know any other songs? No. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He doesn't. He just knows that song that's being played right now. That's all it is. Love it. It's very flavorful. I like it. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's flavorful, but it's also got a very powerful ability. You know, messing with your opponent's combat is can be back-breaking. It can turn games about. You know, um, it's almost a blank pip because there's not that many motorcycles that see a hell of a lot of play. Obviously, there's Flame War and uh, RC. Wreck Gar sees a lot of play from the Art Wave yep. one. Um, but there's not loads and loads of motorbikes. So if you're running this in a Soundwave deck, it's a blank pip card. So that's something to bear in mind when you're building. But it's a good card, and it's got a very, very powerful effect. 100%. It's really good. I like it. Just a really horrific name to try and say out loud. <laughs> just th this card the music card the one, the one with the, the music and Springer screaming and RC crying on her on her knees you know that one enough said cool artwork as well by the way it is it is cool there's, there's a lot of good artwork in this one actually there's a lot of artwork and the, the artwork on the next one is funny as uh, poor Magnus uh, he's subject to a dreadful feast um, it's a black pit for shark to con a green pip for specialists. Hmm, I wonder. I wonder what. So it's a green card as well. So it's a quintesson card. Choose. To, it's an action. Sorry. It's choose two characters on the same team. Move one damage from each to a third character on the same team. So you can either save two of your guys and put the damage on a relatively healthy one, or you could maybe just go. Well, I've I've nobbled that guy a bit and that guy a bit. Um, I'm just going to go and kill that guy that's sat on two health. This this is cool. Um, uh, it might be in my Quintesson deck that I built. <laughs> I like that's it. good. Anything else you want to add? No, I think it's good. Uh, I think it will see play. Obviously in specific builds, but yeah, I really like it. It's a, it's a very versatile card. Um, it's, yeah, I think it just works wonders for that, that damaging... 
uh, Shanticon that just wants to get hurt, 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 and then swing in for a ridiculous amount of damage. It's just, yeah, very tasty. Indeed. You know, there are going to be points in the game where it becomes a dud, though. That's the, that's the drawback. Um, because if you're down to your last character, it and well, basically, you need three characters on a team for this to work. Otherwise, it does nothing. So it is situational, but it's got that green pip, so... You run one off in your deck, and you're happy with that. Yeah, just run one. I think I think one is, uh, I don't know, maybe two if you're running the damage damage Shantikon. But then again, I haven't played him yet, so maybe maybe it is just a one of you know. We'll find out. I'm sure as we get to play with it a bit more. Well, I've only played a couple of games with the deck, so I, I'm not I'm by no means an expert, listeners. What's next? What have you got? Okay, so I've got a weapon. It's a mercenary card, and it's just called Dutch. It's a white pip, and it says, when the upgraded character battles and you flip it, your first white pip, flip one extra battle card. Okay, and it gives you plus two attack. I really like this just because I feel like all you would really run with mercenaries was the uh, soldier's blaster. Yeah. And that was very hit or miss because it was just one, but if you put it on a mercenary and you attacked anyone else, it would give you plus three. So it was a very situational card. This just gives you plus two, and it's a white pip. I'll, I'll probably put this in a Merc build, most definitely, just because it just seems very good for what it does. Like, it is a... Well, let's just be honest. It's a very decent upgrade for a Merc. It's a Merc card, so it obviously is really good with stuff like dual wield and that. I think this is good outside of a mercenary build. Like, it's spinner rims with a plus two attack. Oh yeah, I never thought of it like that. That's pretty good, I think. Um, you know, it's, it can be good on the defense so if you're running a mixed pick deck. It helps you out offensively and defensively because it's when the upgraded character battles, not when it attacks. Um, it's going to be good. Think about those mercenary shark cons from Art Wave 1. They're going to like this card. Spinner Rims meets Primary Laser. We like. Yeah, very, very good. So the next card. So... We're whizzing through them. We're up to 20, mate. <laughs> We're a third. We're a third of the way through, guys. And I'm looking at the counter. We're just under the hour mark. Oh, my gosh. So this is, without further ado, Energy Conversion Field. It's a green pip secret action. If an opponent's card would do non-attack damage to more than one of your characters, instead, repair one damage from all of your characters. Go away, Mag Ray go away yeah i really like it it's so versatile it's really good against metroplex it's really good against fort max it's really good against scorponok it's really good against um this is a almost like a hard counter so it's like no repair it and that's the thing it's not like take cover which is just like no we, we won't take it this turn this is like no and um we all get Bit more health back fantastic card probably probably my favorite non quinson card of the set so far yeah i'd definitely say it would be a be in use for a spy master's ruse asset most definitely wouldn't it for this one probably oh yeah definitely just, just, be under that yeah you just pop it under there leave it there until the time is right it, and again the, the swing that this could provide you know can you imagine because when you mag ray you shoot your own team as well <laughs> Like, again, oh, I've just thought Quake. This is good against Quake. Oh, it's amazing against Quake. Like, oh, I'm going to just chain reaction off. No. No, you're not. You're going to benefit me. Fantastic card, guys. Love it. What's, what's next? So I've got another tentacle. I've got Forked tent uh, Tentacle. It is a black pip and a green pip with the specialist trait in the green pip. Again, it's got the trait tentacle as well, so another one with a trait in the card. It is a weapon, though, for the upgrade. It gives you plus one attack, but it states, put on a Quintesson Specialist only. When you tap, if one of your abilities would make you choose one effect, you may choose two of those effects instead. Up to three tentacles can fit in one weapon slot. Oh my gosh, this shenanigans. That's all I have to say. There's some, there's going to be some absolute turns where you're either healing a ton, tapping stuff. Mate, 
This card on Judges is ridiculous. This card on, like, that Dibris guy as well is also really cool. I butchered his name just then because I forgot his name. Um, <laughs> Drebsnik. But yeah, I... Bre yeah, see, I wasn't even the wheelhouse for that one. I've got it completely wrong, but that guy <laughs> loves this one as well. Seeming these are his tentacles from the movie, I believe, that screenshot. They are indeed. The they are indeed guilty yeah. or innocent. Has the Imperial Magistrate reached a verdict? I have guilty or innocent. But yeah, I, I really like it. Dave, your thoughts? The ability to do both the abilities on a card is really good. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna bring up, for example, Clementia as an example. Um, hey, we got the Clementia. <laughs> we, we got, we got the. <laughs> I think the the drawback with tap abilities is obviously you're 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 sacrificing an attack with a guy to do it, and with the um, Quintessons, you've got to make a choice between two of their abilities. So if we're going to talk about the clap, if we're going to talk about this guy, <laughs> yes. <laughs> because um, it's always funny to talk about someone that sounds like a disease. He's got two attack abilities, and one is obviously scrap a card from your hand. If you do, repair one damage from your ca from a character. If that scrap card is a Quintesson card, instead repair two damage from that character. Then his other attack ability is any character gets plus attack or minus attack equal to the number of tentacles on this until the end of turn. And that's just two abilities that the, the clap should we say, has. Yeah, being able to do both of those is very, very good. So I think this is a almost like an auto-include if you're running the judges. You just put this on because put one of these on, you just can tap, do both those abilities. So yeah, this is a great one. Yeah, can't can't argue with it. It's two, two different tentacles we've seen with two very different abilities, which I really, really like. So. Yeah, definitely. So the next one, this is a cool, cool one. This is kind of a nod to the IDW kind of sort of um, universe, which is the gift of innermost energon. It's a blank card, so that normally means they're quite good. Uh, action, do one damage to each of your characters. If no characters are KO'd this way, choose one of your characters and repair damage from it equal to the total amount of damage done this way. Um, so yeah. It's kind of like in with the law where like their innermost energon is like their, you know, it's their, it's their special energon as it were, um, within them. So the gift of that is it's just repairing a lot of damage. So if you're running a really wide team, you can just heal someone for quite a lot. I think that's quite good. Yeah, um, combiners. Yeah. Any wide team, any or like patrols, and anything wide, airstrike patrol. Ugh. Exactly, it's no pips, so it's got to be good. Um, and it's nice to see another uh, a repair card that can swing. You know, there is a drawback. You're gonna ping all of you guys for one, but if you've got your main character is suffering and taking an unlucky hit, being able to repair say three to four damage it could be pretty pretty good. So yeah. That's the gift of innermost energon. What you have got a blinder. What's this one? Jesus, this card is phenomenal. Uh, this is uh, called Give Me Your Face, which is an action, and it is a tricolor again, guys. It is a black, blue, green pipped card, and it states in an action, when an enemy Titan Monster deploys this turn, tap it. It's pretty good. Fantastic. Just to deals with the the you know the shenanigans of those little heads just blowing your main character off the board. Like we discussed it a lot in the last episode yeah. about just how annoying it is. It's it, it again. It's them answering questions that the game in the state it was left at posed posed the community. It's like, what is a problem, Pierce? What is a problem, Tire Masters? You know, um, in the reformatted set that we looked at a few episodes ago. Eddie had decollated. Now they've got this in the bay form as give me your face. Um, because there's nothing more annoying than having that little one star chap, Kreb, belting him with a grenade launcher and supercharge and killing your guy. Be like, well, that's just dumb. It's just happened so many times. Poor little Kreb. And then when they go grenade launcher, supercharge, all I keep hearing in the back of my head most of the time is just like, why can't we be friends? <laughs>
<laughs> why can't we? Like, totally. seriously. Like, oh, it's so sad. It's a good answer. I think with the prevalence of them in the meta game, this should be a strong consideration for being in your day. Because, it's, again, it's blue and black as well, so it's, it's not like it's just a green pip or something. It's tri-pip goodness. This, you know, you can play Master Metallicato and so many three-colour cards now. So, yeah. The next one. Oh, I said this already. You did. Guilty or innocent. Guilty or innocent. <laughs> Love it. it. Never gets old, that line, does it? Never gets old. Never gets old at all. Um, this is a Quintesson card again. It's interesting. It's a three-pip card. It is orange for melee, black for Sharktacons, and black for Alicons. An action. Choose one of your Sharktacons or Alicons. When it attacks an enemy this turn, choose one. The defender's defense becomes zero during this battle or enemies can't use tough it's an interesting uh quinson car because of one of the few that doesn't have a green pip yeah but you're getting three possible icons of what you're probably running let's face it if you're playing that faction it's an orange black card it's really really good um Oh, you've got Demolisher over there. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> oh, you've got three extra paddings. No. It's a versatile card. I think anything that has versatility in your build is good. Um, because it's going to be good no matter whether they're running a blue deck with tough or not. It's just good. Because dropping Optimus Prime Battlefield Legends three armor down to zero is a good thing. What do you think? Like, It's, it's nuts, isn't it? It's good. Yeah, so it's a definite faction card. Obviously, we talked about it. It's nice to see the first Alicon icon in the set as well on here uh, because obviously we we were quite impressed with how great those Alicons were in the character uh, episode that we did. So it's kind of nice to see them get a little bit of love with this card. But um, yeah, it's just so theme. Like, I can see see running three of these in your Quintus on Sharktacon, whatever kind of shenanigan build, like... Yeah, like hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Like most most things are going to be melee. So yeah, it is a tribal card through and through, and I like that. I like that they've given their their faction a unique identity. So it it makes them do it do, makes them be able to do something that the other factions can't do. So that's really cool. True, true. Right. Okay. What you got? Oh, I got a card that is insurance write off. It, again, is a tricolor pip card, guys. It's black, blue, and green. And in the green is the Judge icon, which is rather tasty. It is a Quintesson card once more. It's an upgrade utility. It states, put on an Alicon and Sharktacons only. When the upgraded character is KO'd, draw two cards. If at least one of the drawn cards is a Quintesson card, you may reveal it. If you do... Draw another card. Wow, this is an auto include if I ever saw one in a Quintesson build. It's a three of in my deck. It's it's really good. Um, because one of the things is to get the the stratagem working, and I'm gonna say it now, you you can bring it up and then people got a sort of frame of reference. It's called Pit of Judgment, and you have to pitch cards to return your Sharks Cons to the battlefield. So this card is really good at helping you reload because quite often you just gonna be, I need to burn three cards to get this guy back to keep my judge safe for a turn. And that's that's what this card does. You just slap it on them, send them in, they get squished. Oh, I'll draw three cards, thank you very much. You know, couple this with a pocket processor on your judge and boom, cards ahoy. Cards ahoy. <laughs> <laughs> cards ahoy. Yeah. Auto include. You nailed it. It's an auto include. Three off. You're playing that. You're playing those squishy sharks cons. You play this card. I really like it a lot. Um, yeah. Again, tribal card. Just works really well with uh, Quintessons. What more can you ask for? So. For me, it reminds me of um, Scout Armor from Wave Five. Yeah. Because I was like put but on a better truck. somehow. Yeah. In a weird but, but, way. But, but, but better because the the sharks cons are really really squishy. <laughs> Yeah, so it rewards you by playing the small guys because everyone's like, oh, I don't know about these guys because they haven't got a lot of health. Well, Dave explained, there's some shenanigans. Our shenanigans are cheeky and fun. 
Yeah, I mean, his shenanigans are cruel and tragic. Which makes them not shenanigans at all, really. That you can do to basically uh, get these guys back, which is great. Yeah, this is essential, 100%. So yeah, uh, that's a really, really cool piece of kit for them. And the next card is also really good with um, <laughs> the Quintessons. So we've got Judicial Discretion. It's a green pip for judges cards only. So no other battle pips on there. It's an action. Do a damage to a character or repair one damage from a character. Then if you have a judge or tie rest on the battlefield, spoilers for future cards, repeat this once. Basically, the way I read this card is shoot someone for two. Or repair for two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so or do good. both. Um, when I was using it the other night, I was literally shoot for two, shoot for two. Fair. Fair. It's really, really good. It's a really, really good card. Again, I think if you're running the judges, it's an auto-include. Yeah, I would say so. I would definitely say so. It's just really versatile. Um, great picture of Ty Rest on there as well. So is he coming? We'll find out. <laughs> Mm, it'd be funny, it'd be like the biggest cock tease ever. Just like, hey, we've got this guy on the way. Never. <laughs> never. <laughs> never. <laughs> that that one totally. card, it was because it was like those cards where it's like, oh yeah, we've got motorbike upgrades. Never saw a motorbike again, did we? After <laughs> certain waves, you know, just. This is true. This is true. And boats and helicopters. Come on, man. There was so much stuff. Wizards just. Yeah. Right. But I well, think it's cool with, with, with the fansets, we are getting more of those cards, seeing a bit more love. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what Ty Rez does because he was a nut bar. So we shall the see. The nicest way of putting it. <laughs> he that was is. a nut bar. He was a nut bar. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't used that word in about a decade. So. There we go. Breaking break break the decade silence of nut bar. I love it. So yeah, that's judicial discretion. What have you got next? Okay. So, um, oh, names, guys. Come on, man. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Litigious Tentacle. That'll do. Close enough. Close enough. Fair enough. We'll go with that. It's on the screen. Um, it's an orange and a green pip, guys. It's a tentacle, so it's got the trait tentacle on it. Upgrade weapon once more. Uh, it gives you plus one armor or defense, and it states, put on a Quintesson Specialist only. The upgraded character gets plus two health. Up to three tentacles can fit in one weapon slot. So effectively, does this stack and you get six additional health? Oh, yeah. That's insane. It's really good. It's probably this, like, they're all really good. I'm trying to remember what the ratios I put in my deck were, but I think I played like one of the other two and I think I played a play set of this because it's just that that good. I feel you'd put this on the smaller guy. Um, oh, Drebsnik. Yeah, definitely on Rebsnik. Because what? That'll then just give him all the health in the world and an additional three armor? Like, that's pretty good. That puts him at 18 health if you get all three on him. That, oh, can you imagine, like, with the, the, the big guys like Comlentia and. Um, are they both specialists as well? Yeah, yeah, they are. They're really, really. Is, like, they get like 22 health if they got a place at, place at Deliberata. Jeez. Okay. I, th I think we've identified if you're running the, the judges. You run tentacles, you run a place, you run at least three of the aspects, get them in there, um, make sure you've got the stars for it. Um, it's just, uh, they're just really good. Yeah, that's the the Tigius tentacle. Now, this is one of the weird cards. Next card I've got is a weird one. It's a weird one. It is a weird one. This, this interacts with a stratagem as well. It's really odd. Okay. So this is called Loader Cannon. Cannon. And once again... We've got a blue, black, green pip card. So that's, was it third or fourth this set? Yeah, something like that. It's up there. Yeah. Reveal when one of your characters defends. That character gets plus one defense until the end of battle. After the battle, if the amount of attack damage that the character took was less than or equal to its armor before flips, put this card in your KO area. Okay. It, it's not immediately apparent what that does so obviously plus one defense is okay i don't think if you're just playing it for that there's a lot of other choices you could have that are better like stable cover aquatic um, maneuvers or whatever it's called there's a lot of other cards that do it better but there's another card that interacts with this a stratagem 
Okay. For a very much loved character. Sweet. So that will become apparent in the next episode. But saying that, it's a three color card. Yeah, three color card. I'm almost thinking, are there too many in this set? Maybe. Maybe. Because. Maybe. Like, OA, OA is, is obviously a really good strategy. Master Metallicato, it's just like, it's almost like every Master Metallicato is going to be a guarantee plus, plus three attack minimum. Um, more, obviously, if you've got the bowl and stuff. But, it, you know, is what it is. We've got them. I just expect to see a lot of multicolor decks out there. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because, like, you know, it's diversity, isn't it? If you can get lots of multicolor, your deck can be good at attacking and defending at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. So, yeah, that's that's loading the cannon. What have you got? Right. Uh, I've got a secret action, and it is called Lose the Battle. It is a orange and green pip, and the melee trait is in the green pip. And the secret action says, Reveal when one of your characters defends. When revealed, return a weapon from your scrap pile to your hand. Holy cow, that's incredible. It's amazing. That's so good. We've already said it this episode like anything that interacts with the scrap pile is powerful in this game um there'd have to be a strong argument to not be running this in an orange deck just getting your just getting your grenade launchers back getting your erratic lightnings back getting your cosmic rust cannons getting your our disruptor blades fusion borer like <sighs> i just thinking of M- matifer's horrific upgrade that he made oh um Bring back Grimlock Sword. Uh, uh, yeah, so Matt, when you listen to this, I think this card is made for you. <laughs> and anyone who's going to be running uh, Grimlock and that sword. Jesus, that is horrific. Again, standout card, I think. Standout battle card. Um, this is a powerful, powerful piece of kit. And we've already said there's more, there's more melee characters that are relevant now as well. So... God, can you imagine cards that are consistently hitting with grenade launchers? I think, honestly, I think this might be my favourite card of the series so far, of the set, sorry. I just see the versatility in it, like... I've been playing, well, let's be honest, I've been playing a lot of living weapons since talking to Christian and running blue and shenanigans. (laughs) So, this is unfortunately only going to work in a certain build, so I'll have to tweak it a little bit, but oh my god, just to get some fun shenanigans with a living weapon in this, oh, oh boy. Well, it works in most builds, doesn't it? It's just that you can't fish for it unless you've got a melee character on your team. But let's face so it. So it's going to be boring because everyone will be brawn. <laughs> yeah, brawn, f- uh, fangry, um, you know, it is a very, very powerful card. I, I'm inclined to agree with you. It's one of the, one of the best in the set we've seen so far. Like I say, you don't even need to be running. You can just run three of that in a non-melee deck and you just play it as you draw it. It's really good. Yeah, 100%. Really, really good. Um, so next one is Lost in Transit. It's a secret action. It's a white pip. This is one of those hoser cards, isn't it? It's reveal as your opponent plays black action. Scrap that action. It has no effect. So what was the one in Wave 5? Was it Overrule? Was the the black pip that cancelled a white action is its polar opposite yeah this stops Kamian crashes it stop. does it it would stop Magre wouldn't it it would mm. fight for position yeah loads of cards just shuts down a lot of cards um assault formation wedge formation interesting you, you know assault formations uh, assault formations are arguably one of the most powerful cards in art wave one another horrible answer I believe that's what I'm thinking yeah yeah it's it's um yeah scrap that shit has no effect it'd be interesting to know and i think um techno majors carl from from the arc would be a good one to answer this so carl if you do listen to this let us know in the comments um would horrible still see that trigger because we're filthy casuals and we get things wrong all the time especially on my channel you know, <laughs> mistake, so you don't have to <laughs> <laughs> It's your, it's your little mantra, isn't it? <laughs> it is, mate. Right. It's true. The mantra of this Next channel. one. Right. Next one. Okay, we're going into Maceration Laser. Uh, it is a blue and it is a green pip. It is a weapon upgrade. It is a Quintesson uh, weapon and card. Uh, it gives you two attack and it says, put on, a Quint- uh, put on Quintessons only. While the upgraded character is attacking 
an enemy from a different faction, it has pierced too. So basically, this is Noble's Blaster or Scoundrel's Blaster for Quintessons. Really good. Yeah, it's very good. There's there's not really much to say about it. We know how good the other two cards are. They're played a lot. Um, this maybe is slightly better because you're not going to see as many Quintesson decks unless they become like tier one in Bayformers events. This is always going to have Pierce 2. It's a plus 2 in Pierce 2 with a, uh, with a green pip. is very, very strong. So yeah, Maceration Laser. It's pretty good. It's pretty it good. It's pretty good. So next one is Manipulate Time. White and green secret action, secret action again. There's quite a lot of secret actions. Yeah. It makes sense, though, because that's what the Quintessons were all about. We're leaking, they were leaking, working they were, in they the were, shadows yeah. and stuff. Proper sneaky buggers they were, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Reveal when one of your characters defends. When revealed, that character gets tough equal to the number of Quintessons you have on the battlefield. When you flip battle cards this battle, if that character's upgrades include at least orange, black, blue, green, green, and you flip at least orange, black, blue, green, green, your character takes no attack damage this battle and you untap all your characters. So this is like an overwhelming advantage, but on defending in a secret action. Yes. Interesting. The effect is mental, like no damage, untap everything, eat you, my sharks. Um, it's it's going to be like 08. It's going to be hard to set up. If you drop that secret action down, you're going to be telegraphing that you may be ready for it. Counter espionage is quite common. So this is going to be hard to set up. But if you do, oh my God. Ugh. I don't know. I feel like if you were going to run this, you'd run Lost in Transit because then if they're going to reveal an action, which obviously is counter espionage, that's a black pip, right? This is true. Just hold one under a spy master. Yeah, so or there's do ways. Special there's optimism. ways. Shenanigans, yeah. as we like to say on this show. This is the kind of card I look at and I'm like, oh, I'm going to try and make this work. Yeah, 100%. Oh my gosh. I like it a lot. I love all the Quintesson themed cards so far. Yeah. I love them so much. It They're is so good. They really are, and they really do have that unique identity as well. So it's not like they've just reskinned Autobots or Decepticons. Like Bayformers have given these guys a very, very different feel, and it's fantastic. So yeah, that's Manipulate Time. What have you got? I have a Masher Mace. It is a orange and green pip with the Sharkcon logo in, or should we say icon, in the green pip. It is an upgrade. It is a weapon. It gives you plus one attack. And it states in the text box, bold one, when this is scrapped from a Sharkcon, return it to your hand. So my immediate thoughts, thinking of fun Sharkcon builds, you just run a few of these and a few of those Sharkcon maces and you've got things that just never leave the battlefield. So... You know, everyone's batons or, you know, ramming speeds or any upgrade removal for hate on these weapons. You know, you're laughing. I really like it. Bold one, it just seems to fit really well with the Sharkticons, how you want to play at the moment, because they seem to be quite aggressive with their bolds. So, uh, yeah, I really, really like it a lot. So, uh, what are your thoughts, Dave? Yeah, it's, you know, it's really good. It tandems well with the Art Wave 1 Sharkticons as well. Like, plus one and bold one is nothing to be sniffed at. You can fish for it. And like you say, with those mate, the, the Sharks Con Mace from Art Wave 1, you've got a lot of weapons that just won't go away. No, fantastic upgrade. Really, really good. Um, and it helps them out because they're quite weenie as well. So plus one and bowl one is, is needed on them. So yeah, fantastic. Next card, Dave, is pretty insane. Ooh, um, pretty insane art as well. I, I, I won't lie. This is Motorcycle Chase. White pip, black pip, but only for motorbikes, or motorcycles, sorry. It's an action, tap one of your untapped motorcycles. Your opponent chooses one of their untapped characters that has 10 stars or fewer and taps it. That character gets brave until the end of the turn. So I'm reading that as the character that has 10 stars or fewer and tapped gets brave. So you can lure one of their characters out and hit it. Yeah. The one that's always hiding at the back. Like, mate, this card, this card, I feel like we keep saying about, like, certain cards that need a little bit of love. Like, 
I know, I know on your channel, Claire loves her biker build. Oh, like, she does. She's I got a like bike this, gang. This is going to be insane in bike gang. Yeah, I, I haven't shown her this card yet. <laughs> <laughs> you need to. If you don't show her, I'll have to just yell That's it. from you, the rooftop. Just like, why is, why is, why is Lee messaging my wife? <laughs> yeah, it's like, why does he keep saying that I should be in a motorcycle chase? This doesn't make sense. What's going on? <laughs> it's fantastic. No, I feel it's really good, especially in like. Yeah, obviously on your channel, Dave, you've run bikes before. And if you're thinking of looking at running bikes, this is insane. Like, I'm thinking of it right now. Tap one of your untapped, like, motorcycles. So it can be a crappier one. And then you untap one of their, like, you know, characters, which is pretty darn good. And then you just go, oh, hi, I'm RC. I've got all the pierce in the world and you can't stop me. Smile. Yeah. It's real. <laughs> it's like, so tap good. one of your untapped motorcycles, Redgar. And then <laughs> it's, it's 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 really really good, and luring something out is always good. Everyone gets really annoyed of like horribles hiding at the back. Ooh, come on then, come and chase me, little bull on my bike. Love it, brilliant. So the next one, we're over the we're, we're over the halfway mark now. We're we are we are halfway. Are halfway. It's never too late to drop in that song. Never too late. Too right, too right. This one is Occupation. <laughs> it's a black and it's a green pip for specialists. Draw two cards, then scrap two cards from your hand. If you began the game with only Quintessons, you may play a green card. So it's a confidence and swindle and or swindled for Quintessons. Um, they're pretty good cards within their factions. Um, I wouldn't say they see a lot of play because you're not. It's not actually card advantage, is it? You're you're filtering for the good stuff, um, but I think it's a solid card nonetheless. And the fact it's got the green pip makes it better. Yeah, and I, and I feel the ability that we've seen a lot of is you play a green card, so that could be a green action or a green upgrade. So those tentacles are all green. Just saying, get those tentacles out with occupation, and then for your upgrade. Oh, I'll play another tentacle because I can. Yeah, or an aspect. Or an aspect, yeah, dude. Like, oh, it's so good. Like, yeah, you can't argue. It's great. No, they've they've done a lot, lot of um, hard work on on making this faction playable. So yeah, it's cool. That's occupation. What have you got, mate? Mate, this card is madly good. I'm already smiling from ear to ear with this card. Okay, so this is open agenda. It's a blue pip, and it's an action, and it states, reveal the top three cards of your deck. Put up to two of those cards in your hand. Put the rest of the, uh, on the bottom of your deck in any order. I love this card, just because it'll be put into my bomb... <laughs> bomb... Uh, Bombshell Wave 2 deck immediately because I just want to get through to all the cool stuff in that deck as much as possible. Uh, the ability of just having two cards put into your hand, card advantage is amazing. But obviously that can come back to bite you with, with some builds. But man, I, I love it. I love this. It's so good. It's a fantastic card. Like, it's... Like, scan the vaults with a standout card draw card of Arc Wave 1. This is the standout card draw card of this this set, I think. Like, it's very reminiscent of MTG. Like, they do a lot of stuff like this. Um, there's the only slight drawback is you're giving your opponent information. So unless you use those cards immediately, you're opening yourself up to espionage slash counter espionage. But it's worth the risk. Like, getting the best two of the top three is amazing. Yeah, especially when you can possibly be brainstorming and manipulating your deck already to then get better advantage. Like, yeah, this card is nothing but money. Like, super cool. Yeah. Again, standout card of the set. I think, you know, like, there's there's a couple that are really shining from a, like, doesn't matter what faction you're playing, these are going to be played in those kind of archetypes. So this is going to be a very, very strong card, without a doubt. 100% mate, 100%. Right, next card. So the next card, and this is cool because this is harkening back to wave four, opportune protection. It's a blue and a green card. So different to the others, which were black and orange and 
black and blue. So this is a secret action. It says different again. Reveal if one of your Quintessons would take damage and you had a mercenary on your starting team. You may have one of your other characters take up to three damage and your Quintesson to take the rest. That is hella cool. Yeah, that is hella cool. It's very different as well because the other ones were like actions, right? They weren't secret actions. They weren't. really cool yeah. to see as well. Yeah. Again, it's kind of sticking with the theme and making it slightly different, making it sneaky. I love that we've got Deadlock there on the artwork as well. Um, it's It's cool. Like, again, messing with your opponent's combat math is a powerful ability. So, like, obviously, with, when we think of mercenaries, we're thinking, like, Deadlock, Octone, you know, Lockdown, etc. Arc Wave 1, Sharp Decons are mercenaries. Yes, they are. You can get this card in your deck without having to spend, like, 9 to 10 stars on a decent mercenary. You can just pay 4 stars, have 1 Sharp Decon, Feeding Frenzy from Arc Wave 1, and you can run this card. Again, that just shows the, the, the planning that's going into these sets. And looking at the interactions between Bayformers cards and Arc Wave 1 cards. So yeah, fantastic. I love it. I love it. So, the next card I've got is Photon Charge. Love the artwork, very reminiscent of uh, press a big red button and see what happens. Love pressing <laughs> buttons. Uh, it's a black It's a black pip. It's an upgrade, it's a weapon. It gives you th plus three attack, guys. Interesting. But in the text box, it says, when the upgraded character attacks and has less than two defense or armor, do one damage to it. When the upgraded character does attack damage to an enemy, do one damage to another enemy. After the upgraded character attacks, scrap this card. Hmm. I wonder what combiner team likes this a lot. <laughs> like, mm. the combiners love this. Yeah. Um, it's really good. It's a plus three attack. Black pip card, so Bruticus loves this. Um... There's a Decepticon from Wave 4 that is going to abuse the hell out of this. Because he already abuses Industrial Grade, Phase Charge, and Fusion Borers and stuff. So let's just give him another weapon. This is going to make Sound Blast. Let's give him a Photon and... Charge. You let's know, give him a Photon Charge. All the charges. I, I'm going to resurrect Sound Blast. I've not played with him for quite a while. Um, going to dig him out of the, the binder and put him on the board. This card is fantastic. It's good... Even if you're not running those guys, it's another plus three attack spike damage card. It's brilliant. Oh, yeah. Um, and with some of the cards already in this set, I can see this working really well. Not just a Selm Blaster build, because of obviously the recursion of the Black Pit. Like we, like we touched on, just saying combiners love this card. Dare I say it, this could be a really interesting card for the H word, which we horribly hate on this channel. He loves this. Yeah. A horrible's gonna love this. It, it's a stonking card. It's probably, again, it's up there with like the you know we've had the open agenda and stuff like that. You know, really solid card draw. We've now got a really good spike damage weapon. Um, it, it's kind of reminiscent of Cosmic Rust. Can like the damage, the damage, damage to yourself isn't guaranteed because there's a lot of cats out. They've got two armor. Fantastic card. I really, you know, this is one that you're gonna play in most builds. I think. Most definitely, I th I think I think you'll see it uh, in most builds uh, if you're playing blue black or just all black. Um, if or you, orange I, black. I, I, <laughs> orange black, yeah. It's, it's just it's too good not to. Good design on that one. Ne next one, interesting art on this one. I think this is what from Prime Transformers Prime the artwork. This is P Polarity Gauntlet. It's a blue card. It's an armor. When the upgraded character defends, reduce the attacker's bold total by the attacker's defense. Plus one defense. Ooh, go away, supercharge. Go away, height advantage. Go away, backup beam. Strong. Uh, tanks build? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is really good. Oh my gosh. This is a sideboard if you go into a bold machine and you're playing tanks. Like a hundred percent of the time. This makes your Metroplex cry. Maybe. Ish. Ish. <laughs> it's a good deck. It doesn't have to re like evolve around the the shenanigans. It gets the flips no matter what. It doesn't need the bold. The bold sometimes helps, but 
it's interesting. Like, I think this is a this is definitely. I'm 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 looking at my chops at this. Like, you think about some of the tank builds you have, and then you can have two armors. You just put this on one. You run that card that allows you to play two armors, and you just put another armor on it. And I like it. I like it a lot. God, like can you imagine card. demolisher with this defensive configuration and composite armor? <laughs> I can, <laughs> and it makes me smile from here to here. Yes, <laughs> it might be happening at some point on Lee's channel. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Try and get those uh, those dirty plays off. you got to love it. It's, it's an interesting choice of art as well, isn't it? Because it's very different to the rest of the set. You know, you've got RC, but RC in Wave 1 was this RC. So, yeah, interesting. I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, okay. So this is going to be interesting because it's possibly one of my favorite characters' armor. Just saying is all. Uh, this is um, Polydrymal Graft, I think, maybe. Po Polydermal. Uh, it's an orange pit. Polydermal. It's a put on melee characters only, so it has synergy with the card we talked about earlier. There we go. There's another one. When you put this on a character, do one damage to it. The upgraded character gets plus for attack. And I believe this armor is for Bludgeon. This is Bludgeon's armor, guys. So, screaming theme for me that this needs to be played in a Bludgeon deck. <laughs> it's an incredible card. It's a utility as well, which makes it like really, really strong. So, it's like energy pack for melee characters. Oh, shish kebabs. Dinobots. Yeah, Dinobots. Um, oh god, Dinobots for this. We get Firecons. Got Firecons melee. I Firecons, yeah, Firecons. Yeah. Um, you know, plus four health on on those guys is going to be really good. And you can play this cars. long, long. Yeah, cars. You can play this a lot of cars. Play on cars. Play it alongside um, increased durability from wave four plus eight health. Blech. And it's an orange pip as well. So like, whereas a lot of the health buffs, apart from energy pack. Or a black pip. This is an orange pip, so this just slides into aggro decks, keeps them in the game for longer. There's a lot of characters that are really going to benefit from this, so there's shenanigans, and there's plenty of ways of moving that damage across, so great card. Again, one of the standouts. And talk about Prime. <laughs> <laughs> there's Prime's new arm. It's a another utility. It's a black pip. Um, put only on a damaged Optimus Prime. The upgraded character has plus two health. This cannot be scrapped by the opponent's cards. Plus one attack, plus one armor. This works really well with the Quintesson um, Optimus Prime that we, we reviewed on our last set. But it also works really well with any of them. Um, we've just been talking about Polydermal Graft. But this this is is, is good as it is. In a way, it's better. Plus one attack, plus one health, armor. So if you put this on OPBL, nine attack, three armor in bot mode. So Prime won't be at that ability right away when it comes to the health because you need to take at least a point of damage. But then the funniest That's thing true. about that is you can easily just scout ignition, draw two cards for yourself and then go, oh, okay, cool. I picked up an arm of Prime. I'll just put it on him now. That's great. It just reminds me of that, that episode in G1 where Megatron like dismantles Prime and then just sticks his arm on top of the tower and it's just yeah. waving around. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost Octopus Prime. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it. It's cool. Um, it, it, it's going to be, yeah, Galaxy Prime loves this. Um, but it's going to be good on any Prime, let's face it. It's just good. What you got next, mate? Right, so uh, I've got the card re Reroute Enemy uh, Vectors. It's a secret action. It's got no pips, so like we say, if it's got no pips, it must be pretty powerful. So, reveal at the beginning of your opponent's turn. When revealed, choose one of your opponent's characters and... No, choose one of your characters and an enemy. If your chosen character would take attack damage from the chosen enemy instead it takes half that damage rounded down that's phenomenally rude it's pretty good this card is great like, i love it not just because also the artwork is from probably one of the best comics you'll ever read guys go read uh, all hail megatron come on like seriously love it 
Um, but yeah, I, I really like this card. Um, again, I feel like you've got some fun shenanigans with secret actions. Dave, you love secret actions, so what are your thoughts? It's really good. I can see this um, tandeming, tan tandeming, say the word properly, with like uh, other wave two sky or even wave three sky warp. Really, it's it's good. Like especially when it's down to one on one as well. Like you know, end game, and it's rounded down. That's an important point to yeah to pick up as well because a lot of half stuff is normally rounded up. So half, rounded down. So if it's one rounded down none so yeah yeah it's good it's good blank pit means it's not going to be you know you know you're going to play loads and loads of them but i can see in a secret action deck with spy master's ruse just tucking this under and just letting it um wait till that right moment in time it's true i feel like maybe a sound wave build would like this just because of secret action yeah sound wave and shock wave as well shock yeah shock wave as well yeah. Oh God! Can you imagine Eddie, with Eddie Santos's shockwave in this? Ugh. Oh no! 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 Never again. Really good. Great card. Great card. So the next card is Scrounging for Energon. It's an action. It's orange and green pip specialist. Choose a battle icon color. Then your opponent reveals the top of their deck. If it has a battle icon of the chosen color. You draw two cards and your opponent chooses a card from their hand and scraps it. There's a chap that you love playing with Paralyzo Box that's going to love this card. <laughs> Who is he, Lee? I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just saying. It's either, it's either Skywarp crazy-ass prankster or possibly a Megatron. Just saying is all. <laughs> like, I love it. <laughs> I, I feel like there's so many cards out there as well that you can basically manipulate the top of your deck. So you could basically easily get card draw an advantage out of this by just control it, it it'll fit perfectly into those control decks that we saw at the atp tournaments really to be honest like a lot of those cards would benefit from this card those builds even so would definitely benefit from this card um because uh, it coincidentally fits into quintesson builds as well because it's got a green specialist pit yeah it seems like a common theme with this <laughs> mm, yeah indeed but now that's a good card and again again fits outside of um, the Quinsol faction as well because it's just a good card all round. Yeah. So yeah. What have you got? Okay, so the next card I've got is Secret Missive. Uh, it's a blue uh, icon. It's an upgrade utility uh, and it states on the card when this is put on a character draw a card, return a green secret action from the scrap pile to your hand. What the heck? Are you kidding me? This is an amazing card. It really, really is. Um, again, it's got synergy with the Quintessons, but also works with a lot of other secret actions that are out there, particularly um, some of the Art Wave one. Ones like Cloud Cover. Cacophonous Failure from Art Wave 1, the two that immediately spring to mind. Um, lose the Initiative, Speed Trap from Wizards Wave 5. All those Hold badges. The Hold the line. The thing is that this is effectively, it, costs, it, it doesn't cost a card from your hand because you replace the card and get a card back. So it's card advantage. So again, another nice playable card. Secret Missive. What's next? Juicer. And it's something that you're probably going to be running in a deck, most probably. It, I might be running three of this card in, in that, that Shark to Con deck, yeah. <laughs> so this is the Shark to Con Matrix. It's a really cool card. Again, it's a tri-color card. It's orange, black, green for leaders. Utility. It's like the Matrix of Leadership, but it's green. Put on leaders only. Each of your Quintesson melee characters gets plus one attack and pierce one, and then plus one armor. So it's almost like the polar opposite of um, the Autobot one. But it's really, really cool. The green pit being on there as well makes it even better. If you're running Deliberata, uh, Clementia, or um, is, who's the other leader? Is, is um, Gyric, he's a leader, isn't he? Yeah. Um, it's just really good. 
just pump, buffing up those little shards cons to make them hit harder. It's good. But the plus one armor as well is really good. It's just a great card. It's just good. Play it. Play three off. What do I have to say other than, yeah, I agree with everything Dave says. Like, seriously, this <laughs> this card is just super interesting and super cool in a shard to con build. Because remember, you can mix and match your shard to cons with shard to cons, obviously, from wave one. So you can have some shenanigans, but obviously, only. This is for a leader, so, you know, I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, great, great card. Shots come like tricks. Over to you, sir. Okay, I've got a card called Shield Clash, or Crash even, sorry. Uh, it is a orange, black, and green pip, so another tricolor, guys. Action. Choose one of your characters. Swap its attack and armor slash defense until the end of turn. Holy cow. I think it's good. I think it's a good card. It's going to be good for those characters that have high armor. For example, the Quinson Judges. You can buff their armor right up with the uh, aspects and the um, tentacles, tentacles and stuff like that. And those go <laughs> swap it over and because you're looking at what you can get them easily to eight, six or eight, easy. Yeah, and they're just oh, I'll shield crash you, bang. And that's before you even think about putting other upgrades on, like Ghost Shield and other stuff. <gasps> other stuff. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> but again, it's not it's not exhaustive for the Quintessons. There are other characters out there that have high armor, low attack. So yeah, it's true. It's gonna be good. And once again, three colors. And I'm telling you, you can just pull off, um, you know, overwhelming advantage by just playing cards in this deck. <laughs> in this from this set, holy cow! That's a really good card. So the next one is Sidecar Artillery. And it's a white pip, black pip for motorbikes. Here we come again with the motorbikes. It's a weapon and it says, when the upgraded character attacks and has three attack or less, after the battle, do two damage to an enemy and scrap this. That's really cool. Because yeah. a lot of the motorbikes are low attack Ooh. and it's two damage to an enemy. So it doesn't have to be the one you just attacked as well. You can swing with Chromia or, or RC or whichever one you've got in, in mo I think RC's got low attack, hasn't she? Yeah. Retgar's only three. Flame Wars only three. Um yeah, swing motorbike mode. Oh, after the battle. Or javelin that guy. Because that's yeah. effectively what this is. That's what it effectively is, a javelin for bikes. That's awesome. Like you needed more javelins. <laughs> like I'm ever gonna play bikes. <laughs> Well, you get, you get, well, there you go. This is an excuse to. <laughs> it's an excuse to try out bikes. It's nice to see motorbikes get a bit more love. And this harkens into... Are we going to see Junkions en masse? Because if we are, this is going to be nuts. Oh, yeah. I, I hope we will be seeing Junkions, guys. I really hope we're seeing Junkions. I think we will. I think we will. So that's Sidecar Artillery. What have you got? Okay, so I've got Squid Pro Quo. It is a blue uh, pip card. It's an action. It's a Decepticon card, guys. And it says, move up to two damage counters from one of your Quintessons to one of your Decepticons. Until the end of turn, that Decepticon gets plus attack equal to the number of damage counters moved onto this turn. So you play this and you basically move two, and then you could do some other shenanigans and stuff like that with other cards that we've seen with moving damage and stuff could be quite interesting but yeah I, I like the card I like the design space it's interesting but will I want to run Quintessons with Decepticons I feel like with Quintessons I probably want to keep it within faction I don't know what are your thoughts Dave yeah I can't really see you know this this running alongside say um the judges and suckers they really want like that kind of swarmy feel with all the little guys maybe like gilthor and some other decepticons because gilthor's gonna be target of priority if you're going against him so if he moves damage across the little decepticons like the airstrike patrol who like green cards and psh, ugh, yeah um, it's interesting, like I say, it's an interesting design space. It, it's effectively move two damage and buff this guy by at least plus two, um, which isn't shabby. I think I think it could be cool. Okay, so I've just realised. So Decepticons, right? 
how I'm reading this until the end of turn, that is not totaling its plus stack equal to the number of damage counters moved onto it this turn. So you pray brainstorm, you play, you play this, and then you move, say, two damage from a leader. Then you play Callous Leadership. Or Energy Transfer is the other one. Or Energy Transfer is another one. Yeah, and there you go. That's, oh, that's a tasty combo. You'd swing for a lot of damage. Yeah, like nearly kill one of your guys, but don't kill it. And then swing yeah. for a big hit. Swing for bajillion. Yeah, That's exactly. it. Go, go for, for a big Hail Mary. I like it. I like it. Interesting. That's what I like about this set is it's got us talking about the different ideas and strategies. So that's cool. Yeah. Because it's not just like you play this instead of this card because it is strictly better. It's like this card could be really cool if these stars align and you get to do this these shenanigans. So yeah, I like it. Our shenanigans are cheeky and fun. Yeah, I mean, his shenanigans are cruel and tragic. Which makes them not shenanigans at all, really. So the next card is Stim Shark. It's another secret action. It's blue. Uh, one blue pip. Reveal when an enemy attacks. Oh, this is good. That's another spicy one. Do one damage to each enemy that has bold. Then reduce each enemy's bold total by three until the end of turn. That's Dinosaurs, really cool. Dinobots, yeah. basically give them the two middle fingers. Stone Cold Steve Austin them. This is it. Firecons like um, bold as well. Metroplex likes bold. Um, there's loads of characters. Wheeljack likes being bold. There's loads of old cards, old cards, cards out there. So this is good. A good sideboard card, I think. Yeah, definitely a good sideboard card. And you love your secret actions, so I'll probably see this in some sort of side sideboard of a build you make, Dave. <laughs> definitely, you know, and like. This, uh, when I generally play Secret Actions, I'm normally using like Major Shockwave or Eddie's Shockwave now or um, Skywarp from Wave 3. So you can just run a singleton and if it's relevant, it's relevant. If not, you side it out. And if it is relevant, you can side in a couple more copies. So yeah, it's a good card, I think. What's next? Okay, so I'm going to talk about the Subcontractor Agreement. It is a white pip. It's a mercenary card, guys. It's a utility upgrade, and it states, if you would use a bounty ability of the upgraded character, you may instead use a bounty ability of one of your other cards. So you get to share all the bounties across the board. Yeah, it, can, it like really lends versatility. Yeah. Versatility. Because, you know, sometimes you might, oh, I, don't, I don't really want to do this bounty ability here, but I really want to do that mercenary over there. There's, there's one. Or I'll use my valuable contract on that yeah. guy. So yeah, I think this is cool. Again, it's nice to see something for mercenaries. Um, and bounty was kind of like instantly introduced. Use loads when the set came out, and then almost forgotten. So I think it's cool. What do you think, man? Like, like, can you see this? Can, can would you build an all mercenary deck to run this? Hell yeah! Give me a hell yeah! I think, I think you'd obviously, it's interesting because obviously the first one that screams out whenever you think of mercenaries is Octone. Like Octone loves this card. Yeah. And like even the smaller ones that we've talked about, like Lockdown's really interesting. Even Deadlock is pretty interesting. Like there's, there's, there's mercenaries that make me want to go back and play mercenaries because of these cards even, should we say. These cards make me want to go back and play Mercs. So uh, yeah. Thanks, Bayformers. Yeah. I completely forgot about bounties and shenanigans. Yeah, this invaluable contract's strong. You know, it's nice, nice that they're supporting cards within their own set, but also breathing life into the older, older yeah. characters as well. So that's really cool. Subcontractor agreement. I likes. I like 100%. it. Hundred percent. Oh, this one is a, is a interesting one. Uh, this is Tetranite Micro Lining, um, Blue Pip Secret Action. Another secret action. Reveal when one of your characters defends. When revealed, that character gets plus two armor until the end of the battle. If it has an armor, reduce the attacker's pierce total by four until the end of the battle. Whoa, that is crazy good. You'd uh, you'd play this with a certain uh, certain Decepticon, wouldn't you? Because it seems so themed with the uh, with the artwork. It does, yeah, exactly. I was about to say with it with his his chest on, <laughs> on the artwork. 
yes, um, this is really, really good with um, both major shockwave. What's well, shockwaves? Shockwaves. Shockwave. To be fair, it's good in any blue control deck. Yeah. You can play extra paddings. You can play trithelion plates from Art Wave One. You play. There's so many decent defensive armors. Again, can you imagine this in conjunction with trithelion plating? They've just swung for a humongous attack with their big guy well, you know they're running loads of pierce and you just go oh, just, just no pierce plus you know whatever armor plus my blue flips strong i think is the word you know could we see a resurgence of blue control uh, maybe i think i feel like there is a couple of control decks already out there brimming in atp so if the guys are watching that and you you want to open this up i'm telling you it could be quite interesting seeing the atp and the bay former set working together because you, like we said earlier, wasn't it, Dave? There is going to be a tournament soon. Using both, yeah, yeah. So we might see some shenanigans. Very, very interesting. I think we will. And this is a good card, even if we don't take other card, uh, other sets into account. You know, plus two armor and reducing pierce by four if you've got the armor is very, very good. So, yep, yeah, Tetranite micro lining. Big thumbs up from me. I will be using this. 100%. What you got. Right. So, again, I have another secret action. Seems there's a lot of secret actions this wave. Right. So, we've got the Dweller Awakens. It is a blue and green pip. It's a secret action. And it says, reveal. When your opponent plays an action that reveals or triggers a secret action, when revealed, choose one. Do one damage to each character or do two damage to one enemy. So you can choose to do one damage to each enemy across the board or two damage to one enemy if they're obviously your opponent plays an action that would reveal or trigger a secret action. So this basically is like a counter to espionage and counter espionage, I think, right? Yeah, it's it, it's it's just like, it's really good if you can get it alongside another secret action. So if you can play a special ops mission or have the Dweller Awakens lurking under a Spy Masters. This could be really good. I think it might see play. I think it's quite cool. I think the opportunity to do one damage to each enemy is really strong, and then possibly pinging off two on one enemy is pretty good. Again, I keep thinking about that Executioner with a minus one health. Like, all these cards we're seeing where it's like a little bit of ping here, or moving damage here, or moving damage there. I'm like, you know... There's some shenanigans going on with this uh, Quintesson stuff, which I absolutely love. Yeah, it's good. Next one, Thermal Sealant, which is a blue and a green pip for specialists. Utility. When the upgraded character defends against an attacker with pierce and you flip at least an orange, reduce the attacker's pierce total by one for each orange you flip this battle. So we got more pierce hate already. Again, you know, we've only just had one with Tetranite. You know, we've there's a couple as well. Um, was it Aquatic Maneuvers and that that we reviewed right at the beginning of the episode? They, they've gone hard on, on Pierce hate in this, this set, I think, you know. I think it's because it's a problem and everyone wants to solve the issues. And there's, and there's so many cards that we've seen in this set that address the issues of Pierce and minusing Pierce, but they've all got different like icons so it will fit in s different builds you won't be playing most of these together but i i like i like the card i think it's really cool the artwork is bitching by the way i thought that was a really cool choice mm. um but yeah i would i could dare i say i could hilariously see this in um dino saw uh dino bots just because um sludge is a specialist and mainly you're running bold yeah yeah so having the ability to just go, oh yeah, okay, I'm, I'm here to be attacking this guy. Cool. I'm gonna. Okay, how much pierce? Okay, cool. I stop that much pierce going through, and you know, it's interesting. I think I think it will see play. It will definitely see play. It'll be a, an interesting card to put into a deck. I'd like to see uh, what kind of builds it would be put in, to be honest. So. Yeah, I think I think it's interesting. It'd be re I think it'd be good with like characters that have got high native armor in like orange aggro decks or like you know like if you're running demolisher because it's you know unless you're playing the atp stratagem his health pool's very low but he's got a high armor so you know um and you play a lot of oranges with demolisher generally so like flipping multiple oranges on defense keeps him in the game longer so yeah i think i, I think it definitely sees him play so yeah what's next 
Again, we have a secret action. Gosh, oh, there's so many secret actions. It's a Quintesson card, guys, and it's called Touch of Quintessa. It is a white, black, green pip card, and the, has the leader icon in the green pip. So, secret action, reveal. If one of your Quintessons would take enough uh, attack damage to be KO'd, when revealed, repair damage from that character equal to the number of green pips each player flipped this battle before it takes the attack damage. Then put this card into the KO area. That's incredibly strong. It, yeah, it is. Particularly with the Quintessons who are running a lot of green pips anyway. So you could, like, you know, repair. If you've got, like, high tough on it, you could repair quite a lot of damage and then stay in the game. Again, very. it reminds me of, like, that. What's that card from Wave 4 with the, the double blue Autobot one? That's very similar. The Heroic Resolve. Yeah, Heroic Resolve. That's the one. So, yeah, it's just another one that will, like, oh, I'm going to kill that guy. No, no, you're not. Yeah, I like how it isn't like Heroic Resolve because Heroic Resolve is just like, he's alive on one. Like, this has the ability of surviving, well, healing damage off it before taking the damage. So it might even come back with more health than it originally had after the attack, which is yes. pretty, pretty cool. It's good. Again, it's a twist on an existing card, isn't it? it it's something different. So I like it. I like yeah. it. It's, um, it's cool. And again, it's three pips. Just saying, there's another three pip card. So, lo lot of goodness um, from from flip density as well. Turnabout snares the next one. We we have, we're whipping through these, aren't we? We, we are, really man. Are. We are. We are flying through. So turnabout snares a white pip secret action. Reveal when one of your characters defends. Swap the attack. Uh, swap the attackers attack and armor until the end of the battle oh that's good are you attacking me with battlefield legend are you he, he's attacking for two i'm gonna see this aren't i dave just because you love your bloody secret actions <laughs> you are <laughs> <laughs> it's great it's super cool like yeah it it screws over so many things like the the turns where everyone's like right i'm pumping him up with this i'm pumping him up with that i'm gonna swing for you cool I'll just hit this. Okay, so that, you know, that 10 damage character you're doing at the moment will probably go to like two. Very, 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 very good card. Yeah, you're going to see this. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> really? It's cool artwork as well, like brain, Brainstorm just hanging upside down as he uh, as he's wont to do. Yeah, it's really cool. And again, another secret action, like... My secret action deck is going to be like 100 cards. It is. It's going to be my, my great, great War secret action Your Great deck. War secret <laughs> action deck. All the secret actions all the time. Love it. Exactly. Exactly. So the next card. Right, the next card is called Under Base Fragment. It is a white pip and a green pip, but it has the spaceship trait in the green pip, which is cool to see. Uh, it's upgrade utility. It says put on a specialist only. And then, when the upgraded character is tapped, return a tech research or an upgrade with superior in its name from the scrap pile to your hand. Oh, I love this card. Oh, I love this card. This is... Oh, I love this card. Like, everyone always rags on, like... Well, the superiors are kind of, like, good, but the problem is you need to play tech research and all this other stuff to actually get them out and stuff. This helps them so much. Like, sure, you could cheap off, like, superior plating because of hunker down and stuff like that, but it might breathe life into that other crop of superior upgrades. So I'm all for this. Dave, your thoughts? Yeah, I think the only time I've ever used superior cards was with, like, Wave 1 Jetfire. I did superior jetpacks giving Pierce four, and the plating for tough, like you say, hunker down into the superior plating. The cannon, just, just, yeah, just never. It, it's good. Bold four is really good, but yeah, it, they always suffered, didn't they? It's like you've got to have this bit and this bit in order to do this. But like getting you, get it back. Is it enough to make them hyper playable? Probably not, but it's going to be fun doing it. 
I think it's my my thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm just thinking now. It's like, what you've got? Cosmos is a specialist in a spaceship. What's Astro Train? And I believe he is a specialist. Specialist spaceship. Yeah, you're true. So yeah, you, you can do some shenanigans. Some great shenanigans. Our shenanigans are cheeky and fun. Yeah, I mean his shenanigans are cruel and tragic. Which makes them not shenanigans at all, really. Anything that gets old cards played again, even if it's only around the kitchen table, I'm all for. Um, you know, like I said, it's not going to be enough to push them into a competitive region, but please put them into a playable region, and that's exactly what these guys have done. So, um, Dave, the next card then, bro. Next one. So this is a fixed version of a very very powerful wave two card. So this card is called United Against Tyranny. It's an orange pip card. It's an action, it's an Autobot action. It says, choose one of your Autobots. It gets plus two attack until the end of the turn. Choose an enemy Decepticon. It gets minus two defense until the end of the turn. It's what press the advantage should always have been. No green pip. Yeah. Simple as. Um, it's press the advantage fixed. Enough said. Yeah. Press the advantage was oppressive and it kept Decepticons out of the game because you were likely, you know, when I first started playing, it was around wave three and I can remember my mate Matt coming over with his Optimus Prime deck and I got destroyed by it. I'm like, how are you playing this every turn? Oh, it's got a green pip. It just basically stopped... It's, it just sent, you know, all right, cool, we've got, we're going to introduce some really cool Decepticons in Wave 2, uh, but also we're just going to kick them while they're down uh, again uh, with some really broken card design. Good job. Um, and then how do they fix that? They banned it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how can we solve this problem? Although there is an argument out there, isn't there? I know there's been a couple of tournaments that have actually allowed Press the Advantage to see how it affects the Wave 5 meta. So it'd be interesting to see um, if press is still oppressive or not. But this is a great, this is a great reprint without reprinting. It's like, here we go, we fixed it for you. So you can't fish for it, but it's still good enough to play. I will play this in all spot decks if I'm going against Decepticons. Let's face it, Decepticons are very prevalent. So could this help them out? Like the Ark gave Autobots so many good Autobots. Um, with like Bumblebee and Sideswipe and Retgar, you know, there's loads and loads of them. Tag team it with this, you you, you could see Autobots rising up again. I think I think they're good. I think this is a good yeah, card. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, you've got you've got the one. I, uh, you've did. No, 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 no. This is what's going to happen. You're going to reveal this card. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to take this from you. I cannot take this from you. I cannot take this from you, Dave, so you're going to have to do this one, bro. Yeah, I'm going to have to. I'm sorry, I'm going to usurp you on this one. You can do the next two. So, Mate, I, no, no, no. We'll go back to one-on-one. -on -one. I just, I can't take this you one can't. off you. It's, it'll be sacrilegious. This is the card that I said I wanted to see in an upcoming set. It either had to be titled Bar Weep Grana Weep Ninny Bong or the Universal Greeting, whichever fitted on the, the card nicest. So we have the Universal Greeting. It's an orange card. It's an Autobot faction card. It's an action. Don't act hostile. I'll use the Universal Greeting. Universal Greeting? Watch. I'll have an idiot out of my hand. Ba weep grana weep ninny bong. Ba weep grana weep ninny bong. See? The Universal Greeting works every time. Choose an Autobot character and another character that is either a Quintesson or Junkion. Ooh. Make a choice for each of your chosen characters. It gets bold one to the end of turn. It gets pierced two until the end of turn. Repair one damage from it. So, I, 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 I'm just happy that this card exists. I don't care about what it does. But it's very interesting because it refers to a faction we haven't had yet and again future design yeah yeah it's it's you know it's the card dave always wanted and it's really <laughs> cool to see like there's been a few there's been a few inklings with some of these battle cards of like what's coming in the not too distant future probably for bay farmers we'll probably talk to adam when uh, when we've obviously revealed 
uh, episode. It'll be episode 21 for the stratagem. So we'll probably get him on for episode 22 uh, and talk about some of the card design and what he, what the whole team of the Bay Formers went through for some of the themes and stuff like that. And obviously get your guys' questions in as well. But it's kind of cool to see what they're teasing us with, you know, certain characters and certain factions that they're, they're possibly working on in the not too distant future. So very, very exciting. And from a gameplay perspective, you can put Autobots on the same team as either Quintessons or Junkions. I think Junkions is probably going to be something that, that I would love to see personally. But like, you know, both get bold one. So you play this when you outnumber your opponent late, you know, late in the wheel. Oh, these two get bold one or this gets PS2 or repair damage. Like cards that give you multiple choices are generally good. They were good in Magic the Gathering. I think this is going to be good. Is it is it brokenly powerful? No, but it's very cool. True that. Right. Uh, I'll go to the next one then, uh, Dave. And it's Unsavory Leftovers. This is a orange and green pip, and it's got the judge uh, icon in the green pip once more. Um, it's an upgrade utility, and it states, uh, put on Alicons and Sharktacons only. When the upgraded character is KO'd, you may p return a orange weapon or a blue armor from the scrap pile to your hand. Oh, just like we needed to get those grenade launchers back for a Sharktacon aggressive build, hey? Yeah. There's, there's two cards that do it. Yep. And a, how many is in this? Uh, uh, how many cards of this is in your shard to con build so far? It's quite a few. <laughs> 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 two or three. Like it, it's it's really good. Like the this and the was it insurance write off kind of automatics if you're running that swarmy shard to con. It's really good. It's just again using the scrap pile it's a resource and you're just going to abuse it so I love it great yeah it's really good I can see it being played in my shark to con build because I want to run the alicons and shark to cons and also some of the merc shark to cons as well so we can have some fun shenanigans so mm, definitely it's all good yeah definitely like recursion 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 so the next up is vorpal fangs it's a white and a green pit for beasts. That's cool. So it's, it's on theme for the Quintessons, but also is really good for like Fangry, etc. etc. So it's an upgrade weapon. When the upgraded character attacks and you flip battle cards, if you flipped at least four greens, scrap this card. If you didn't, reduce the defender's armor by one until the end of the battle for each green you flipped plus one attack so it's like plasma horns from wave five yeah it's plasma horns but for green pips but for defense rather than for attack yeah yeah it's plasma horns for green pips and it reduces defense rather than pumping attack so it's very very similar um yeah again it might be in the shark's condo <laughs> <You have to. laughs> it's all about the fangs bro i'll be shocked if it wasn't in there i'd be like so what are they they're just toothless things come on man it's it's really really because when i was building the deck as well like it's it's actually really hard to like put anything that's non bayformers wave one in the deck because you start putting all the cards you want in from the set and you're like actually most of my deck is is this set you know which is really good which means you can you, you could bought, buy no transformers boosters ever print off the bayformer set and build a functioning deck out of bayformers cards which is very 100%. very cool it is very very cool and especially if you like the quintessons i feel like you could easily just come back to the game and go oh i just want to try out this whole bayformers world strike set oh man, I don't need any of the other stuff. I could just actually play a lot of the cards straight from this set and it will work out a treat. Exactly. You can build your deck com completely comprised of cards from this set. So that's really cool. So what's next? We're nearly at the end, mate. This is the ultimate card. We are nearly the end. Oh my gosh. Number 61. What lies beyond? Uh, it is a tricolor again, guys. It is a white, black, green icon card. It's a secret action. Again secret action now reveal when an enemy returns to the battlefield from the ko area or an enemy is ko'd by an opponent's card uh, without doing damage to it when revealed do two damage to an enemy tap any characters that returned to the battlefield 
from the KO area. If the opponent would take an extra turn, they skip that turn instead. Oh, wow. So this, again, Stone Cold Steve Austin, it's just giving two middle fingers to Peace Through Tyranny. Go away, Peace Through Tyranny. Go away, I still function. Go away, involuntary promotion. Wow, that's... I feel this is a sideboard card. Like, especially for competitive players, yeah. possibly. I think it is. Depending on what format you're playing in. Obviously, ATP of, of uh, just ban PTT. But involuntary promotion is a very powerful tool. I still very powerful, very powerful, powerful tool. So this is just like, yeah, mm, go, go away. Oh, that guy, you've I still function. He, he he enters tapped. Wow, wow, wow. It's interesting to see, um, like, other answers. So rather than just outright banning a card, which is the approach that ATP have done with PTT, they're like, well, we're just going to give you an answer to it. And also, if you think about it, like if your opponent goes on on a PTT and you just go, no, that could absolutely wreck them because not only have they KO'd their character, they don't get their extra turn. Brutal. Yeah, I, I think this is a standout card. I think this is a very standout card of the set just because everyone thinks Peace Through Tyranny is a very busted card. I think it's a very situational card. I think a lot of people play it most of the time just because it's a dual orange pip not to really get the uh, the bonus sometimes of a two turns back to back most of the time it is just there for its icons mm. so it's quite interesting to see this card like you say a lot of the time you are just playing because it's double orange but with titan masters it broke peace through tyranny which is i think why atp banned it so just to see someone discard ptt my titan Oh, I'm pop out the head and take an extra turn. No, you're not. It's a good card. It's the last one, mate. We've made it. We've, We've made, made it, it to the end. This is called whip, Whipped Into Shape. It's an orange card. I feel card. like we've been whipped into shape. I definitely. For this for the show. And, and I'm going to go, we're going to have to go back afterwards. You have to do a little count on how many secret actions are in this set because there is a bucket. Coming on the screen on. now and a hilarious edit now. 17 secret actions. That is, uh, well, let's think. There's 62 battle cards. And my math isn't great, but it's almost a third of this set of World Strike are secret actions. My co host loves secret actions. So having a third of your battle set secret actions, it's a little bit spicy. And with that being said, let's get straight back to the episode. Reveal when one of your melee characters defends. Do one damage to that character. It gets plus four armor until the end of battle. Bosh. That's a really good aggro deck secret action. Because quite often if you're playing an aggro deck, you, you, there's not many secret actions you run because they're all, they're all mainly blue. So you've got what, like bolster for your armors. But that's about it. You might play hiding spot from wave three as well. There's, there's not a lot that you would play in an orange deck. So they go, oh, he's got a bolster. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm going to play around that. So giving you secret action density, because I've got a orange pounce deck with wave three sky warp and then another character. So you can use like um, Night Racer and stuff like that. Or if you want to use Randy, Randy's... Um, rat trap from his maximal set and do some oh craziness this is a good secret action for for aggro decks definitely it's true i like it in tank builds tank Ooh. builds love this card oh god think of that definitely no it's I, I think overall what we've looked through tonight and we have whizzed through it because we had a lot of battle cards to look at i think what they've done is you know what it's fantastic. It's a really, really solid set. It seems to play nicely with the other fan sets. It seems to bring like stuff that was like kind of left behind a bit, like mercenaries, back to the fore. You know, what do you think, man? I think it's a fantastic set. It's true. I feel like everything they've done for the Quintessons is amazing. Like I think the Quintessons are just 
all their upgrades in this, all the aspects, all the different types of tent tentacles, dare I say it, all the themed Quintus on cards as well is on point. Super flavorful, super themed. Um, I think I really like some of the cards in this. Like, I think there's some amazing card draw cards. There's an, an amount of secret actions here that just add to the arsenal of more incredible secret actions that already involve and are already in the game. I think the one thing we mentioned at the beginning of the episode and we mentioned it a few times, some of the cards are a bit wordy, but overall, I really like what they've done. I feel like their characters were really good and I like what they've done with their battle cards. I really, really like them. I think there's a few that I know are going to go straight into some of the builds that I want to play. So I, f I feel like so far, that's two ticks, Dave. 100% without a doubt. Like, it's what I really like about this set is how it integrates with the Arcwave one as well. And I thought that's obviously intentional because they're going to be working in partnership moving forward. But a lot of this is probably designed independently of that do you know what i mean so it's just it's just really good you've got you've got cards that work really well with the quintessons like you said and have kind of made that faction unique but there's so many good cards that are just going to be staples everywhere else you know angle moi surge or whatever however you say that card you know arm to the teeth <laughs> there's there's some great cards in here there's there's tools for car decks you know, you, you can play Demolition Derby over Ready for Action. I know it's situational, but if you get that situational off, it's going to be like a double attack at plus two attack. You will. You will if you run it with tracks. You will when you run it with tracks. Just saying is all. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Track tracks. If you is, don't, you're is, playing is, tracks is, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we've got Photon Charge. We've got Open Agenda. We've got Secret Actions coming out of our ears. And we've got a brand new faction. <laughs> We've got a brand new faction that really brings something fresh and new to the game. So, listeners, if you've not already downloaded this, ordered it, whatever, however you're going to play with these cards, if you're going to print them off at home and blue peter it, just do it. Because I think this set is fantastic so far. And we're not even finished, are we? What's next on, on our next Jeez. episode? So our next episode, we're going to break down the stratagems. Now, Dave, if I re recall correctly, the stratagems, there's, a, there's not as many, shall we say, as we've covered in this set. <laughs> I mean, in this in this episode, shall we say. But there's still a fair there's still, few. There's <laughs> still a lot. There's 35. Yeah, we're gluttons for punishment. I swear, I swear. But I'm excited because there's a few stratagems in here that have kind of got me like smiling from ear to ear because it's bringing some of the old characters back to the forefront, which is what I want to see more than anything. Yeah. And there's some interesting stratagems in there that, are, you know, I, I think some of them are very specific, like character trait based. Like some, of, I think, I think melee has been a real big one in this set from just having a look. So, and, and it's just really cool to see that um, they've addressed some things and, and, it's, and it's really cool to see where these guys are going to go because obviously we know they're going to be working with the guys from the Ark uh, and they're going to be doing some bits with them. And, you know, if you've enjoyed the Ark and you've enjoyed this, man, the, the sky's the limit for, for what they're probably going to do, which is really, really cool. So, um, yeah, guys, I feel like that is it that is the end of this episode thank you for listening to episode 20 it has been fantastic we are now in the 20s dave we're now here in our prime <laughs> that's it we're, we're, we're adults now we can <laughs> we are we can make a jo choices and i can let you guys know dave and me have not been slurring as much because we have not been drinking a lot this episode so sorry to disappoint our <laughs> listeners or viewers who wanted to hear us slur i'm sorry I'm just getting over a COVID jab because I I've I work on the front lines as most of you know as a support worker and I had my jab a few days ago and I told Dave uh, I've been hallucinating and just not being able to keep food down but I powered through to to bring this episode because otherwise Dave we're not going to be able to get through <laughs> this episode because there's so much stuff coming there's so much stuff coming out thick and fast right now yeah there is so we've we've got. Obviously, the next episode is going to be the stratagem one. Then we're going to speak to Adam about this, you know, you know, subsequent to us reviewing it. 
Um, one thing that I've been doing this week, which I'm really, really excited about, is the Great War format. So even if you don't want to like print off the cards, there's a set called the Great War. And we're going to be speaking to to the designer of that at some point, a guy called Matthew. Um, the format itself is really cool. So that's definitely something that's on our radar to do. Because me and you, we're all about the crazy casual formats. Yeah, and Great War is crazy casual. It is crazy it's casual. It's a little bit like Primus, I think. Yeah. But bigger. <laughs> but bigger. If, if you could bigger. make it bigger. If you could make it bigger. So, yeah. We've got loads of exciting stuff coming up. We've probably got the next probably three or four episodes planned out. As it it's is. true. We've got the stratagems, talking to Adam, probably reviewing ATP3, then talking to Dan. We've been wanting to get Dan on for a while, and I know Dan's been wanting to get on this show for a while, so that's going to be fun. Um, obviously, we've said Adam wants to be on the show. He's reached out through Matifer and the guys through the arc, so it's been really fun. We've got Great Wars. Man, we've got a lot of stuff coming. Eventually, we'll have a show where we might just have to do a filler show and just get people talking, Dave, and give us questions again so that we can just yeah. relax from all these reviews. <laughs> we, we're still working on our, our Thursday nights, aren't we? We're gaming on Thursdays. We are looking at Twitch, I think. We're gonna be, we, we need to probably sort of flesh that out and then give people a little tease as what's going to be coming because it's going to be a proper collab of content creators and members of the community and I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be something that people can get involved in as well. Yeah, and that's what we've been looking forward to because obviously this podcast is a voice for the community. We now want to create content involving people from the community. Like we did that with the Deck Tech Challenge at Bleed Time Productions, but Dave and me and a few others, let's say, let's say Matifer and a few others, we've wanted to do something that involves the community, that they can come and hang out and actually be a part of is something we want. So we've got a name. I've got it. I'm, I'm working on a logo. I've already got the theme song, so we're all good. So I just need to think of some other fun stuff. And yeah, you'll probably see that towards like the middle of the next month. I think we just got to finalize a few things and just get it sorted. That's it. So it's all That's good. It, yeah. So yeah, it's all awesome. That's it, isn't it? That's it. It's a goodbye from me this time. It is true. And it is a goodbye from me, Lee. Remember, guys, to leave a like, drop a comment, tell us your thoughts on this Bayformer set. And obviously, if you're on Podbean, uh, thanks for downloading and leave those iTunes likes. It's always appreciated. So we'll see you for episode 21 when we break down the Bayformer stratagems. And it won't be as long, hopefully, as this one, because there's only 30 cards, not 60 plus. Insane. <laughs> One shall stand, one shall fall.